Hello again, everybody. We're back at Stevens Point, Wisconsin, Gerke Field. It's uh, the National NAI Championship Football Playoffs today. We've got a chilly day here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Keith Brown and uh, Denny Callahan, Mike side with you. Get the field in excellent condition here, though, the home of the Pointers from the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. The weather is, uh, I suppose, not going to be a major factor in the ball game, but it is cold. And, of course, the Pointers kind of used to playing this kind of an atmosphere. We're in the valley here in the central part of the state of Wisconsin. And you get uh, all of the cold waves. It seems like to filter through this state. And we got a pretty good blast of cold weather here this afternoon for the start of this football game. Temperatures, uh, I'm not sure of an exact temperature, but they're probably in the mid-20s. They are anticipating maybe the mid-30s by the time it hits the highest peak of warmth today. Got a little bit of a chilly breeze, though, blowing across this field out of the northwest. Wind chills, I'm sure, down there in the teens as we approach the kickoff for this one. Keith, uh, good to have you, Mike Side, and it's good to be in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, for what we've been shooting for all year. We've met the first goal, and now Coach Mazel says we've reevaluated our goals, and that's shooting now for a national championship. Well, that's right. They've had to, to change their our goals, as you said, mid-season when playoffs talk started, and boy, it's exciting to be here. It's it's too bad we had to come this far in this cold weather, but boy, I don't think it's going to bother the players. And and I think from what we've seen, kind of being around them a little last night, there's one thing they want to do is strap their helmets on tight and and take these pointers on. A uh, sky condition here is varying from uh, cloudy to part of cloudy. We've seen peekaboo uh, from the sun underneath uh, the clouds, but it uh, looks like we're going to have a, a dry day here. There's been a little bit of snow prior to our arrival here, and there's just a skiff or two of it around uh, off to the end of the end zones. See just a, a very minute patch here and there on the field, but the field's in excellent condition, it looks like. That's right. I, I can't see that's anything different than what they're used to practice on at home. It's, it's maybe a little frozen, but there's... There's going to be traction there, and that's right. We're not dealing with any wetness or moisture on the field. It's just a little cold and might be a little uncomfortable, probably more uncomfortable for the people in the stands than it will be for those players. And we've got a little sun peeking out now, and that's going to make a big difference here too. This uh, Gerke Stadium, which uh, is the home for all three of the schools here in town, the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, Baselli High School, and uh, the uh, public school, that's uh, Stevens Point Area High School, SPASH as they call it here in town, uh, so it does take a little wear and tear, and it's some thin spots in the middle of this field, but uh, it's really couldn't be in a better shape, I think, and uh, it's just an excellent, excellent facility. This does belong, I think, to the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. Uh, sits just off to the west or east side of their campus, and, uh, of course, it's very much the university atmosphere here in Stevens Point, uh, a campus of 9,100 kids. It says... Uh, not seem to awe our kids any. A little campus from Northwest Iowa that has about 450 full-time students. They have come here with a mission, I think, on their mind, Brownie, and that's uh, to beat this uh, bigger school, the biggest in the NAI playoffs out of the 16-team field. And this team has not been uh, really distracted from that uh, particular mission all week long in preparations. Did get a chance to practice for just a little bit on the field, uh, which is just to the northwest of this uh, game field. Nobody was allowed on the game field the day before the game. So they did get a little workout here in Stevens Point yesterday. I guess they've kind of had a little bit of a disappointment that way in arriving to town. They, of course, uh, ran into, uh, well, first of all, the rooms weren't ready at the hotel, and uh, they got here to the stadium. Nobody was able to tell them where to dress, and then they had to s practice with uh, a lot of the Stevens Point people looking on. So I guess that's part of a road trip sometimes, and particularly uh, the NAI playoffs. I guess you felt maybe you'd be a little better organized than that, but that was an early frustration for them. Well, that's right, and I think Coach Kasuka made the, the correct comment that it probably bothered the coaches more than the players, and sometimes on trips like this, it, something you, you worry about is too much idle time, sitting around, mulling around what to do, and sometimes, I guess, maybe wandering around campus looking for where to dress might keep them more busy, but I don't, as Coach Sukup said, didn't seem to bother the players a little bit. They got one thing in their mind here today, and, and so we hope that they can overlook the problems they had yesterday and, and get concentrating on the game today. Sure is interesting the two coaches approach to this ball game today. We've got uh, a coach that thinks it's going to be close, and he's worried about moving his offense, and that, of course, is D.J. Leroy from Wisconsin Stevens Point. Randy Schmazel's build this as David and Goliath. A lot of similarities, I guess, between the biblical David and Goliath story. There was a little David. He didn't get intimidated at all by uh, the bigger giant Goliath, as everyone else in the town was, as you remember the Bible story. And then, of course, he went to the air to win the ball game and, or win that uh, ultimate victory for him. And I think Westmar probably is uh, going to be able to draw those two similarities from that particular biblical story here today. So it might not have been a bad uh, 
a piece of uh, work on the part of Randy Schmeisel to draw up the similarity to David and Goliath. Well, that's right, and he wants a wants a setting of, of the underdog. That's always, I think, a, a positive point for a team to make you feel challenged, doesn't make you feel intimidated. You can kind of let it all hang out, so to speak, and I think that's what he wants out of this team, and that's the way they play better that way, that looser, looser hit them, get them type atmosphere, and that's what he's got set up for them, and he's got to control this team their mind, so to speak, during the week, and, and that's the the ground he's taken, and it's kind of a fun phrase. We sure heard it enough, and I'm, I'm glad it's going to be over here in three or four hours. Well, the pointers are on their way to the field. Westmar huddled up around Coach Schmazel. Some last-minute uh, words, some encouragement for him, and uh, he is quite a motivator anyway, and I know he's got this team at just the right tempo over this ball game. Pointers are wearing the home purple here. Look a lot like LSU for those of you that follow the major college game with the gold helmets, uh, SP on the side, and the gold pants with the purple and white striping. And uh, then we've got uh, Westmar in the traveling white with the blue numbers, the silver headgear gleaming in the sunshine as we prepare to kick this one off in the silver pants here this afternoon. Westmar and the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, two of the top offensive teams in the country. In fact, Westmar leads the nation in scoring at 36 points a game. Stevens Point close behind at 31 points per ball game, rates them 10th nationally. And these two, of course, are among the top 10 in total offense. And uh, Westmar, second in the nation in rushing the football. University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, number two in passing the football with Kirk Baumgartner throwing 31 touchdowns this year. So we're going to see probably a lot of points at the board with both teams over 400 yards a game offensively. Kickoff is going to come to Vern Bolden at the 8 and run away. Back to the 15 to the 20. Oh, and there's a fumble right away, and I think the pointers have got it. Son of a gun. Right off the bat, Westmar drops the football. Tom Gauget. A sophomore out of Jefferson, Wisconsin, off top of the pigskin. Ouch, Brownie, that's just not the way you wanted it to start. No, well, he ran through. He was straight up and down. The ball got stripped out of his hands. I guess you can blame it on a lot of things, but I guess you got to call cold weather. Gloves on their hands, a cold, hard ball. You just don't get that sweat in your hands to, to hang on to it. And, boy, that's, a, that's one thing that Westmar does not want to have happen today and put the defense on this toughest situation. But they're out there now, and they're going to do the best they can here. Pointers take over at the Westmar 23-yard line. Yeah, here's a little freshman Vern Bolden from Wyandatch, New York, playing high school football this time a year ago, and uh, I'm sure the hands were nervous. Can hardly point fingers. So coming out of the eye formation, going to get a Mason right away. Mason going to blast inside the 15, down to about the 12-yard line. He fumbled, but it came after the fact. They've got uh, Mason running out of that one running back, uh, Keith Majors, I should say, a junior out of Dallas, Texas. He's one of two SMU transfers when their program uh, was put on probation down in Texas. The other course being uh, Atron Kenny, who leads the team in touchdown pass catches. Now it's Majors in motion. They're going to fake to Blanco over the middle. Touchdown. There's the first pass of the game, and it's uh, Theo Blanco making the catch on a little slant in over the middle, and the pointers are off and rolling here. Now if you're the pointers and heavily favored in this ball game, as I think they were, you're probably going to be glad about that kind of a start as far as uh, UWSP is concerned. Well, that's right, and they... They did what they can do. They're a nice little in pattern. Got all the receivers out, as we talked before, and we'll talk more. They like to send five, six receivers, had man on man, just a little in pattern, and got the protection and completed it. Well, Kevin Dietz is going to try the point after. Dan Dantoin going to be doing the holding. Westmar jumped a little early up offsides, and that'll move them a little closer. Let's see if they change their mind now about a two-pointer or the single point. Six to nothing already, and we're just 30 seconds into this one. 14.33 left to go in the opening quarter. Now it's going to be a legal procedure. Going to be the call against the pointers. So this will mark five off against uh, University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. And again, uh, Dietz, who is a straight-on kicker, he and Joe Parrish share the kicking duties. Parrish is soccer styler, and they never know from game to game who's going to kick. They've had a lot of trouble with extra points in recent days. Dan Toyne going to hold it for him. Kick is going to be up, and it is good. 7 0 pointers back in just a moment. Okay, Dietz going to kick it off. Vern Bolden and Todd Skolton back deep for Westmar. This kickoff is going to take uh, Bolden. Oh, he fumbles it again and down on one knee. Now he scoops it up at the 10 to the 15, and he's worried about holding on to the football. They tried again to strip it out of there. Again, it was Gouts, who, uh, Garkard, who made the recovery in the last one. Coming in there and quite obvious <laughs> to us, uh, try to strip it out of there again. I guess once you get that kind of a feeling, you're going to go for it one more time. That's right. It's something we're going to have to watch all day. They're going to try for it. you got the hanging on to the football with these gloves on, and you've got an extra layer or two against your body. You're, just, you're a little bulkier, and it's a little harder to hang on to it. And 
And they're going to have to really be careful and get two hands on it when they're in that contact and that heavy traffic. Ball just inside the 15-yard line. Westmar going to start in not very good field position. It's Vern Bolden, Kelvin Pierce, and uh, Charles Hill are going to start in the backfield. And I see now Vernon Bolden going to throw those gloves off to the sideline. Kelly McClinic at quarterback and open up with an option play. McClinic going to keep it and go down. And not much there at all. In there to make the tackle was Jay Downey. Wisconsin Stevens Point going to go 225, 265, 240, 225 in the front line. Craig A. Walt and Jay Downey are the offense or defensive ends. Bill Collage and Kevin Dietz are the starting tackles. Bob Bolstad, John Baker, uh, Beckard, and Brent Harder are the starting linebackers. Tom Gockert, Scott Nikolai, Craig Verhagen, and uh, Dan Dantoin going to be in the secondary. Westmore starting the same as they. They've started most of the second half of the season offensively. Back to pass. Going to flip one over there to Calvin Pierce. Juggles and makes the catch, but he was out of bounds. Still juggling as he left the field. Westmar looking at second or third down now at about 12 to go. Seven to nothing pointers with 13.45 to go in the first quarter. Third down in a passing situation probably for Westmar. They go with Skolton split wide to the right side out of the wishbone set. Skolton had strep throw the last couple of days, but is uh, fairly in pretty good shape. Back to pass. There's a uh, the long one downfield. Skolton's going to make the catch at the 45, and he's going to be out of bounds right there. Westmar hits him big right away. Skolton, the top pass catcher for the team, with 17 completion, uh, completions to Todd. Five touchdowns and an average of 31 yards per pass completion, and that one's going to be about his average in the neighborhood of 30 yards, Brownie. Great job on Skolton's behalf, and Kelly laid it up there nice into the wind, and and Skolton ran right under it and got the big completion. And, boy, that was a big first down for us. The sideline of Stevens points walking around smiling like this. They got a scrimmage going on here. But I think this Westmore team is too good for that. And it's good to see him get out of that hole. Yeah, they're out to the 44-yard line now. It's going to be first and 10. There's a get to Charles Hill. Hill's first carry in two ball games. The all-time career uh, leading rusher for a season. And he's going to carry out to about the 45-yard line, just a yard on that one. And so far, this uh, Stevens Point team has shown to be kind of stiff against the run, but it's early. That's right. It's early, but we've heard them talk about it a lot. They like to really concentrate on, on the, the point of impact and pride themselves in the ability to stop, I guess, that inside game and and these running backs, and that's Westmar's strength, so to speak, so it's going to be a real challenge. This Westmar line is going to really have to rise to the task here. And I think that was what we wanted to see early, just how well our offensive line could open holes for the wishbone attack. Option play. Now Kelly going to go back to pass, going long for Todd Skolton. Skolton again makes the catch down to the 25, 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he's in with a touchdown. And Westmar's going to be on the board with a chance to tie this one up. And hey, hey, Brownie, here's our offense. That's right. It's We're not going to lay down and play dead when we give him a fumble on the 15. And boy, what a great job. And I guess... I'd like to say I've been tooting my horn. I've been saying, where's this Westmar passing game the last few games? And, and they've got it. They've got to bring it out today. The, the defensive line is tough, but they bring a lot of people up hard and fast, and that means you can go right over their head. And it is the way David slew Goliath, indeed. And it went up top 55 yards. A touchdown, and, uh, and now we're an extra point away from tying this one up again to Mike Morey. Going to try to keep his string alive. 41 straight since September. This one's going to be up, hooking a little to the right, but it's in there. Westmar's tied it at 7-7 with 12-51 to go first quarter. All the way now, all the way. Kickoff. Kickoff is going to come to Blanco, and Blanco is going to be... No, Atron Kenny going to be taken down at about the nine-yard line as he had a little footwork problem down there, Brownie, as he slipped a little bit as he tried to catch kind of a squibbing kick from uh, Mike Moore or from uh, Jim McPartland, and uh, their pointers are now backed up inside the 10-yard line. Similar to what Vernon Bolin had happened to him down there. He slipped the footing, and, and Blanco, or uh, Kenny even looked up to see who was coming. That's a live ball on the ground. He did manage to get it up, and now Westmore defense had them backed up, so let's see if we can hold them here and start getting some field position on our behalf. So far... Every possession's been points. 7-7, seven, seven, we're tied. 12.47 to go in the opening quarter. There's uh, a man in motion. This is going to be the tight end, uh, or check at the flanker, Jim Prince. Back to pass. Baumgartner from his end zone. Going down for Kinney. One-on-one with Seeloff. Kinney's got it to the 40. He's gone. Seeloff fell down. It was one-on-one, -on -one and nobody's going to catch him. Oh, baby, this is 91 yards. And it's going to be a 13-7 pointer lead. Baumgartner just aired it out. And I don't think anybody's going to hold anything back today, it doesn't look like. That's right. They're going for it all. We're doing it in the air. And that little wind behind his back helped that one because, boy, Seeloff was just an inch away from getting a hand on it and a good catch by Kenny. But Seeloff gave all he could there right at the end but just couldn't quite touch the ball. Atron Kenny's the sprinter from uh, SMU. Transferred up here to Wisconsin Stevens Point this year. And 
He's been a welcome addition. That's his 17 pass catch of the season for Baumgartner. Two TD pass catches in the opening five or touchdown passes in the opening five minutes of this ball game, and he's got 33 for the season now. And Dietz will try to add the point after. Well, the pointers have got to know they're in for a battle, and I think that was evidence there, throwing from deep in their own end zone. Going to prove early they can throw the football successfully. That one's going to be up and good. No, no good. It's wide to the left, and it's 13. And handing him over his shoulder, and they're still a drive behind. They just now handed us Westmar's last scoring drive. Kickoff is going to come to Skolton, who's in there as a deep returner. Back to the 10, to the 20, and cuts uh, over the 20 to about the 23-yard line, where he'll be taken out of bounds for the pointer special team. And Westmar going to bring the... There's a flag down. There's our first little altercation to the ball game. A flag flying high in the air. Referees for the ball game today are Bruce Wojak, John Bombach, uh, Roy Ward, Jack Evans, Roy Worth, and Jim Murray. Line where the Eagles will again come out of the hole. They had an 85-yard drive in five plays in the last possession. A 55-yard pass from McClinic to Skolton to score 13 to seven. McClinic optioning back to pass. That's a dump it out here underneath the bowling ball into the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and he gets hit hard on the sideline and driven out of bounds. There's the split out to the wide out. Todd Skolton taking him deep a couple of times for pass catches, and this time driving the corner deep, and then Bolden out of the backfield, slipping underneath for the little pass catch. Splitting wide to the right side. That's a 30-yard pass catch from a clinic to Bolden. Bolden, second pass catch of the year. He had just one during the regular season. There's a give straight up the middle, a quick opener, and Bolden inside the 50 to about the 49-yard line as he's going to blast forward for uh, looks like about nine yards near the first down sticks, but not quite there. These Wisconsin people probably say, I thought this was a running team, but uh, the Westmark kids who didn't complete a pass over the Dakota Dome uh, 10 days ago against Dakota Wesleyan are coming out throwing the football, trying to loosen them up a little bit. That's what we're going to take. They call it the hammer defense, kind of a 44-43 look. McClinic back, looking again, downfield, throwing for Skolton. Skolton going to tip it and incomplete. Had one-on-one -on -one coverage. That time Kelly just didn't quite throw in the right spot because uh, a young man by the name of uh, Greg Dantoin, who was All-American uh, material, in fact, he was one shy of a school record pass interception total. Was hurt earlier this year. There's a fumble again by Bolden on the off tackle and the recovery by Stevens Point. They ended up catching it in the air, and that's going to snuff the drive out at the 41-yard line. Vernon's having a heck of a time, and once you've been uh, labeled the fumbler in this ball game, they're really coming at him trying to put a helmet on the ball and rip at the arms, and Vernon hasn't had fumbling problems this year, but he sure is today. Game about three weeks ago, suffered a knee injury, and that may have ended his career. And that's why Goggert's in here. So Westmar is picking on that cornerback, the newest in the secondary. There's the give to uh, Blanco, and Blanco going to carry it about the 45-yard line. Westmar defensively going with the people they have gone with, and some of these people were questionable. Mark McLeod and Mike Rogers in the defensive ends, and Utick and Oswald at the tackles, Crotzel at the nose, Freddie Anderson and Kurt Westhoff at the linebackers, Joe Holmberg, Scott Seeloff, and uh, Frenchie Holmberg and Joel Schwartz getting the start in the secondary. Hanser did not make the start in this ballgame here today. Inside the 11-minute mark in the first quarter, it's 13-7. to seven. Pointers lead it. Had a lot of action, and we're not even five minutes along in this playoff game. And out of the shotgun, Baumgartner. And the spread offense now. Everybody going out of the pass pattern. Now he's in trouble. McLeod's on the chase. Lost one downfield. It's going to be out of bounds. Joey Holmberg could have intercepted, but everybody was off the field. Pass intended downfield for uh, Keith Majors out of the backfield. Westmore today hadn't played at all at the varsity level. Uh, to, to my eyes, unless it's been late in some ball games, Troy Stanley, sophomore out of Bagley, in there as a nickel back on the play. Pass going to be over the head of the intended receiver, Jim Prince, a senior out of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And again, Baumgartner, feeling a little heat, just kind of wasted that one away. That time he got a pass rush in the series, Keith. That's Force right. Force it downfield. He oftentimes will overlook an open man underneath the coverage to try and get it downfield. And that was the case that time. A low snap, Dan Dantoin, good baseball player, had to do some baseball moves there to scoop it on the one hop. And it's going to be out of bounds. Kicked it away from Paul Safford and Joey Holmberg. And Westmar takes over on the 17-yard line. Keith White is a little less of a potent weapon than maybe the place kicking. But it's been adequate all year. McClinic and him set it a wishbone. Pointer's doing a little shifting around. Flags fly as the snap is made. And they'll blow the play dead. And let's see who jumped early. Legal procedure against the Eagles. And that'll cost him five. Well, it's those types of things, I guess, you get because you're anxious, but we've got to cut those down today. Hard line where they're looking at...
first and 15. Well, they've been looking at poor field position this whole first quarter, it seems like. They've scored from uh, 85 yards away on a 55-yard pass play. McClinic back, throwing for Skolton, down and out. He was open, but the pass was there a little earlier. Timing pattern, and with Westmore not necessarily being a passing team by nature, the play uh, was mistimed. Changes. That's what this is all about early in a ball game. Option play, McClinic to the 10, cuts up field to the 15, and down he goes at about the 16-yard line. Going to pick up about uh, six on the play, and it's going to be a third down, well, more like a four-yard gain as they move it back to the 15-yard line. And they're looking at about third down and 11 to go now for the Westmar first down. Skolton in and Rob White out of there. Westmar so far has had a little trouble running the football here, Keith. That's right. That's probably been one of their bigger gains other than maybe on one of the fumble on the fumble that Bolden had, but uh, he got the option, got the corner like he wanted. Four yards isn't bad, but when you got first and first and 15, it's it's not enough. Pointer defense gives up about 18 points a game, only 137 yards in the ground. So they have been kind of tough to run on. And again, they call their defense the hammer defense. Kelly McClinic in a slip coming away from center, and down he goes at the nine-yard line. That's just this uh, frozen turf here in Wisconsin. It's been colder here than it has been back in northwest Iowa so far in the last couple of weeks, and Kelly just slipped with those shorter cleats on a turf that doesn't have much resiliency anymore. No, there's no very little grass out there. It looks like dirt on the center field, and that's too bad to slip out of there like that, and you like to at least get your play completed, but that's part of it, and they're going to have to have a big punt here. Fourth down, they need about 12, and again, have to bang it out of here into the wind, and the pointers with one of the good kick returners in the nation, Theo Blanco, back there as a single punt returner. Looks like the pointer is going to come with a rush, too. Rob White going to drive it out of there. Kicks it away from Blanco a little bit. Going to hit and roll. Takes a nice 10-yard roll, and there'll be no return as Westmar gets good coverage down, and they'll stop it at the 47-yard line. And you got to have them big, strong linemen that just so hard to get around, and that's what they recruited, and that's what they want for this passing program. 8.52 to go in the first quarter. It's 13-7 to in favor of the pointers. Baumgartner back to pass. He's gone to his strength right away. They haven't even tried to run the ball but once, and now he'll scramble out of bounds, and Freddie Anderson going to take him to the sidelines and then on over the backside of the field to the track. Baumgartner did impress in films as uh, knowing when to hustle out of the pocket. He could feel it when it's collapsing, and he's not afraid to just get it off the field. Carter to Kenny and McClinic to Skolton for 55 yards through the air. Neither teams run the football very successfully here in the early going. Second down. And about seven to go. Back to pass. Baumgartner got three in the last play. Swings it out here to Blanco at the 45. One-on-one. -on -one. Joey Holmberg going to take him down. One of the best one-on-one -on -one tacklers on this Westmar team. And Blanco a little upset. He didn't get a free of him, but he came up as one of the best open field tacklers uh, probably in the Midwest. That's right. You want a coach's clinic on how to tackle one-on-one, -on -one, that was it. Joey didn't take any fakes. He just went right at him, kept his eye right on his number, and took him down, got the legs. Holmberg boys, of course, uh, grew up. In uh, Minneapolis, about three and a half hours from here, they've got quite an entourage of fans uh, down here rooting from the Twin Cities. About 15, Joey said, family members were going to come down and watch today. And then he's going up to the Twin Cities for a little visit before returning home later in the weekend. Got the split back look, split receiver. It's the pro set, down and out. Going to go to Blanco. Blanco makes the catch at the 30. Now he's loose to the 25, to the 20, and driven out of bounds by Scott Sealer by uh, Troy Stanley over there on the far sideline. Frenchy Holmberg closed fast, but just didn't have the speed to get there. And Blanco, with that good running ability, got to that sideline and on downfield for the big gainer. First and 10 of the 18. Pointer's going to come out in a single back set. We promised you a lot of offensive looks, and we'll kind of describe them to you as they show them to us. This must be about their seventh different set already in this ball game. There's the give up the middle of Kenny Bre or to Majors, breaks the tackle, fumbles the football. Well, McLeod made a nice hit inside, didn't make the uh, final stop on him, but he bounced him back, and then the help arrived in the form of Kurt Westoff to put the finishing touches on. That's right, great defensive job inside there, and, and they're going to hold this running game down. We saw a little, the ball pop loose. It was after they hit the ground. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And, Referees, I don't think will give many of them away. They'll realize this ground is hard and cold and it's going to come out of there when they hit it. This might be as hard as the AstroTurf we played on over the dome. Pre frozen field here in the North Country. Just over the lake, Lake Michigan, uh, about the middle of Michigan. They were getting about 15 inches of snow last night, so it could have been worse than today. Baumgartner over the middle, incomplete, trying to hit Jim Prince. He doesn't, you know, he's put four, 190 pounds from Colby, Wisconsin, and he rifles them in there. I'd hate to be on the receiving end of some of those in the bare hands today because he does put a little zip on it. Now we got Blanco in motion to the right, leaving him with one setback. And that's Majors. And he'll swing out of the backfield, too. That's tipped almost intercepted. Schwartz, in fact, had he been looking for the football instead of the receiver, 
might have been able to pick that one off as it went right through Atron Kinney's hands. There was the gloves almost creating a turnover as it went right through Kinney's hands. Back in September, he'd have probably caught that one. That's goal. Right. And this will be a long one for a team that doesn't kick field goals or extra points very well. Joe Parrish, freshman soccer styler out of Watertown, Wisconsin, will try for the placement of Dan Dantoin. They're going to spot it on about the 24. 34-yard try. Kick is going to be up. It's long enough, accurate enough. Yes, it is. That'll make it 16-7 to with 7.03 to go first quarter. To this first quarter and already 23 points on the board. And the kickoff from Parrish is going to be short. Skip over there to Kelvin Pierce, taken by Bolden at the 10. Running to the right to the 15, gets hit hard, breaks that tackle, and then he's down at about the 17-18 yard line. Well, these pointers do cover kicks pretty well, but... I think uh, we're running a little timidly right now after the early uh, misfortunes on the kickoffs. That's right. Vernon isn't isn't going after the ball real hard. He's a little scared of it, but uh, we had a wall set up on the other side, and he had it clear over here. It was kind of tough to get over there and get behind the seam, and that makes it a little easier for him. Out of Jefferson, Wisconsin today. They haven't had that much success running the football. There's Charles Hill going right. He's going to be tripped up and taken down by Jay Downey, the right defensive end at a mountain, South Dakota. This kid's uh, quite a story, they tell me. He started out the football season as a third stringer. Talk about perseverance. He just kept working his way up on the depth chart, and here he is a starter in an NAI Division II football playoff game. Sure can be done. I've seen it seen it quite a few times. The guy has in his head that he's going to work and gives 110% every practice and, and got his way up in there, and he proved it on the field, and now he's out here getting his reward. Hill loses two on the play. It's second down and 12. We've got 623 to go first quarter. McClendon can look over that pointer defense. Going to set up in a... Uh, Double backfield uh, look now. Deuce backfield. McClinic going to run out of the end zone. He's forced out of the pocket, and he'll come out over the five and down at about the six-yard line. Now we're getting the answer to some of our questions here in regard to can our offensive line game in or play in and play out, handle their defensive people, and we're having some problems up there. That's right, and they're sending a lot of them. The linebackers are coming in, playing awful hard, and, and we're either going to have to get by them on quick openers or, or else we're going to have to throw over the top of them. Pointers have got the Eagles pinned in the hole of the five-yard line. They're looking at third down at about uh, 13 yards to go now for the first down. This is uh, one of eight branches out the University of Wisconsin, and they're all in one league up here. The uh, University uh, State School Conference at Wisconsin Stevens Point won this year and were co-champs of a year ago. Their defense has led the conference the last two years statistically. Going long for Rob White, who cuts inside and can't make the catch because of a collision. Nothing called. Both going for the football. I guess it was all above uh, the rules there. Scott Nikolai broke it up from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, out of the end zone as the Eagles continue to have this poor field position. And this is going to catch up to you. They're already... Uh, down by nine points now in this ball game. White at the back of the end zone has to hustle it. They again came for the block and he kicks it away from Blanco. Going to take a bit of a favorable pointer roll this time before uh, coming down on the specialty team to touch it down for Westmar was Tim Shipley. Pretty right in his uh, forecasting of this ball game. Field position and the defensive play was going to be important, he felt, in this ball game. And so far, that's been two key weapons for his ball club in getting out to the 16-7 to lead. There's the pitch to Blanco. Now double reverse. Kenny going to pitch it back to Baumgartner. And a little razzle-dazzle down the middle. Incomplete. It all went for naught. Westmar had the receiver covered with uh, three people. Pass antenna for Jim Prince. He tweet a senior out of Stanley, Wisconsin, comes in for Jim Prince now. Give him a blow after the long route. They're going to go with the pro look, and now they send Blanco in motion to the left side. Same side as their tight end. Back to pass. Four men out of the pattern. Downfield, his man fell down. Marcus Hanser in there playing uh, at the strong safety spot. Pass antenna for Atron Kenny as he tried to make his cut to the outside. He slipped and fell. Was going to be used in this kind of a spot where he didn't have to retreat too far. He can play in front of him pretty well, I think. But if he has to turn and chase a receiver behind him, it's going to be tough. A little quick slant in and, whoa, oh, did Joey Holmberg put a lick on Prince. That's one thing in the film. The Westmar defensive people felt they didn't see anybody hit in this league. They knew they were going to put some licks on him. Oh, did Prince take a shot there? He got up, but he's they pointed to the sidelines, and Joey got his first lick at uh, plant one right in the kisser. He's going to have to punch, so they wasted their field position. They gained nothing from the 32-yard line. They're still going to pin Westmar in the hole. They'll probably just try and kick it for a corner. Another short hop. They're going to get caught with that pretty soon. Dan Toyne hangs one up there. It's going to hit about three yards deep in the end zone and bound out of there. So Westmar actually going to come up with one of the more favorable field positions of the day, the 20-yard line. KLM this afternoon, Sunday night. You can see the replay of this ball game. 
We wish you were here. There's quite a few Eagle fans that did make the trip up here. They're kind of chilly across the way, but I know they wouldn't trade places with anybody right now. They're glad to be here looking on in person. That's right. They follow this team a long ways and watch a lot of great games and like to see this season continue on. Continue on a will with a victory here today to next Saturday. When and where, we won't know. Back to pass. McClinic giving ground, giving ground. Swings one out over Kelvin Pierce to the 12, to the 15, now to the 20. Good block out there from Spearing, and he's out over the 30, and Westmar's got him close to a first down, out to about the 31-yard line. Well, Westmar's got a little favorable field position. The only other time they've got any kind of field position today, they scored a 55-yarder from McClinic to Skolton that tied it at 7. 16-7 to seven now. Pointers up with 4.18 to go first quarter. Been a long quarter with all of the passing. There's the get of Pierce. Pierce off tackle. Still churning and driving, and he pushes the pile to about the 35-yard line. You know, five yards about our normal clip per play. Pierce averages five yards per carry. Vern Bolden's up there at nine with his two great games uh, to end the season, and Charles Hill of five and a half. Uh, still not the same Charles Hill we've seen most of the season. He's carried a couple of times today, but for little gains, and uh, he's just not that quick start in Charles Hill we've seen. No, the old ankle that just isn't quite 100%. It's awful close, but you need that. You need that extra week or two and then to play on it hard and then get that confidence back in it and he's still just a little hesitant there but he might get it both through through here today byron bowling jeff waldeisen john barton tim polly wayne spearing and tim shipley up front for westmar and they open a nice hole and now and back to pass a little time to throw now tipped and incomplete almost intercepted over the middle by uh, big number 52, Kevin Dietz, a 265-pound tackle from there. Something they haven't used too much to just swing a little back out of the backfield and over the middle to try and cut down some of that blitz work from their linebackers, but they nearly got that one picked off. Back to pass, McClinic getting some uh, pressure now. Stiff arm gives him some more time across the field. Got to be caught by Skolton. The flag going to go down. Pass interference probably on top of it, and Skolton makes the catch downfield at the 31-yard line executed uh, about as well as you can throw a football and coming back and catching it for senior Todd Skolton. First quarter of action, 16 to 7 pointers, and Westmar trying to dent that lead. Out of the wishbone, Skolton split wide right, back to pass, play action, given ground, now fires over the middle, Shipley goes up, makes the catch, turning and driving, and he won't quite get into the end zone. Another spectacular catch out of our receivers with a flag back up field and is that a late hit Brownie I think it's going to go against the pointers they signal what was the call I look like a personal foul I saw the end of the officials but needless to say that's that play is going to stand and here's they came in late on McClinic and that'll be declined so two penalties not even needed on this drive and Westmar is on the march now from their own 20 yard line and threatening to draw close again in this contest back to within a couple of points that extra point would loom big then that was missed as a field goal could put Westmore back in front. Now is when the quarterback comes in the huddle and says, two hands on the ball, fellas. We don't fumble down here. And you want to get it in the end zone. You don't want to fumble and give it to him in this kind of field position. And now Westmore's little general, Kelly McClinic up there looking over that pointer defense as they're up there nose to nose in the goal line. There's some early movement. Byron Bolden jumps uh, on our left side, but they did jump inside prior to that. Were they offsides or did bowling draw them off? I think they drew drew bowling off. So the defense can jump in and get back and behind, but I think it looks like the offense is going to walk back. That's a tough one. Boy, you just can't have that down here. Legal procedure going to be first quarter of action, 16 to 7 here from Stevens Point. But a long first quarter with a lot of passing. There's the give back up inside of the quick dive, and that's going nowhere. Slamming down to the ground is going to be uh, Kelvin Pierce, and Pierce is going to, in fact, maybe even lose a yard on that as they'll respot it about, well, maybe even a football's length from the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and goal from just outside of the five-yard line. Rob White checks in, and uh, Todd Skolton coming out of there. And the Westmar offensive lines are going to have to do the job because there's tough passing inside this close. So you may want to look to uh, try and blast a little bit closer on this particular play. It's going to be key play as to whether we're going to score the six here. They are going to throw for White. Touchdown! Dropped it! Oh, he dropped it! Had it and dropped it here in the corner. Cold hands again. Kelly underthrew that just a little bit. And Rob, instead of, as Todd Skolton and Tim Shipley did, come back to the football and make the secure catch, he tried to reach back and catch it, and it went right through the gloves and all. Down, goal to go from just outside of the five. They've got two receivers to the left. Skolton in motion. Back to pass. McClinic running, running. He's in trouble. Now he's going to heave it toward the end zone. It is going to be incomplete. Boy, that was a pretty dangerous pass. Skolton went up there and uh, tapped it away, but 
Bob Bolstead, one of those outside linebackers, a freshman out of Partyville, Wisconsin. Almost uh, got up there to make that interception. I'll tell you what, uh, Brian, that was a pretty dangerous pass. Kelly just laid it up there for grabs. I sure was, but Skolton had it in his hands, too, and hit his hands. And looks like we got another penalty down here. Going to back up Westmore up some more. But things are really going against them here now. Goldberg will be holding. Mike Morris is four for seven kicking field goals this year. We'll try this one from 22 yards away. Oh, he didn't get much leg into it. Going to be up and just got over the crossbar. 16-10, minute 20 to go first quarter. Back in a moment. Freshman Jim McPartland's got her teed up and approaches the football, and the pointers are going to put her back in action. Kenny going to take it up to 20. Now to the 25, up the middle of the 30. Pretty good hit put on downfield by... Westmore Cottage, Kurt Westoff, I believe, came down and put a pretty good lick on there from the special team unit. And I guess that's not too unfamiliar. We've seen that a few times this year. Far in kind of a uh, 43 look now as they get an extra linebacker in there to cover some of those uh, backs. There's going to be an off-tackle play to Blanco, and Blanco going to go down near the line of scrimmage. I guess this was a little concern to me coming in there, Keith, was a team like this that shows you pass so much, they burn you with a run out of every once in a while, kind of like we do with a pass with our running look so much. Tom Gardner's got him in the spread, and he's going from the shotgun. No secret about where they're going this time. It's airborne. Good pressure almost got to him, and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to go for Kinney. But we had Westoff and uh, Marcus Hancher right there to cover it all up, and uh, that one was just kind of wasted away once again. They'll load her up again next year wanting to try and put a running game in place. Majors the lone setback as Blanco's in motion to the left, back to pass, four people out again, good pressure. McLeod almost got there, lost it up, it's up for grabs, tipped away by Frenchie Holmberg. Coverage by Troy Stanley, Frenchie Holmberg, and Joey Holmberg, and again it was Kinney going the long route to uh, finish an offensive series with. And Westmar should finally come up with some favorable field position. This very likely will be their best position of the day. Dan Toyne. Kicks a nice high sailor. Joey Holmberg going to take it at the 25. Gets away from one man. Gets to that corner. Gets down to about the 30 and a flag. Going to go down. Might have a face mask there. Joey's head kind of snapped and pulled down. And if that's the case, that'll move it out to about the 45-yard line. Let's see for a preliminary signal here what the referees are going to go for, go with. No indication from them yet. See, yeah, a, see a pointer pleading his case here, so it's got, I would guess against him. Face mask it is, and that's going to tack on 15 more. Yard penalty on the non-flagrant face mask call, but tacks on five more anyway, and it's going to move it out of the 35, and Westmar's got their best field position to the day. Out of the wishbone, straight ahead to Charles. He'll fumble the football, pointers have got it. Never got that one stuffed in the tummy. Jay Downey, sophomore out of Mountain, Wisconsin. Going to pounce on it, and the pointers got him a big break again. Gotcha. So we'll talk about this later. We've got to get to working on a running game. We haven't really worked on the timing and everything. So that could be what's happening to him. Blanco going to go the 30, 25, and down near the 21-yard line where it's McLeod and uh, Stanley and Hancher up there to make the tackle as the pointers had their most successful running play of the afternoon. They're going to get, get the ball tucked away before you can run with it. Well, the quarter's finally ended. It is 16 to 10. Pointers, Stevens Point. Uh, about 24 popula 24,000 population, kind of excited. They have not won a playoff game to this point either. They lost in Fargo last year, and down in uh, Texas, uh, three. You're back in '77. There's the give off tackle off in the second quarter to the fullback Majors, and he's going to carry down about the nine yard line. And now they've got Westmore thinking pass pretty solidly, and they've been able to get a couple of big running plays in there, Brownie. That's right. They're doing like we are on their run. We're we're making them think run and, and throwing the ball, and, and they're doing the same to us. And they're the, the big fullback, two hands on the ball all the way, even when he broke up field, and he will make sure not to fumble it. And that's what we're going to have to do over here on Westmore's side. Picked up about 12 yards in the play. It's first and goal on the nine yard line. Two fumbles. This one yet to be capitalized on, but they're close, and they did capitalize on one to open the ball game. In fact, there's been three Westmar fumbles that have been lost here today. Straight ahead of Blanco. Blanco goes to the eight. Well, all of a sudden, we have forced them at least to get away from their all-out passing attack, getting them down here close, and uh, forcing them to keep the thing on the ground. This yep. is tough to throw the football down here, though, isn't it, Brownie? Yeah, but I bet they'll try it now. They, they've, <laughs> they've lived and died by the pass, and they ran the ball three times in a row, and I bet that's tough for them and their coach to, to do that. So I think they're going to open up now and try and throw it in the end zone. Second down and goal to go from the eight-yard line. 14 minutes to go in the first half. It's 16 to 10. We'll see if we can get Scott Roker, the sports information director, in here at halftime. Tell us a little bit about Stevens Point in the state of Wisconsin and Stevens Point football. Back to pass, Baumgartner. Down he goes. First sack of the ball game. And coming in here, Mark McLeod from that left side. Didn't get touched at all. And Baumgartner down all the way back to the 20-yard line. McLeod came in a blitz. Nobody picked him up. 
Nobody back there to pick him up, I guess, when they send everybody out of the pattern, Keith. Really smothered him, too. The, this Baumgartner doesn't have any mobility, and it really didn't have much of a chance. And, boy, what a big defensive stand, or not yet that's not a stand, but what a great sack. Third down back at the 20, third and goal to go. They've got to get six to uh, get anything out of this. So it's a big down coming up, but it does open the field up a little bit more for Baumgartner. Kind of a blessing in disguise to the good throwing quarterback that likes to go downfield 15 to 20 to 25 yards. Those linemen already poised to drop back to pass protect over the middle, wide open, and a broken tackle, touchdown. Son of a gun. Troy Stanley got a shot at him at the five and uh, tried to hit him high, and a nice spin move there by Don Mailing, sophomore out of Jefferson, Wisconsin. He spun back inside and got in to score. Well, I guess the sack didn't do it after all, and they score on third and goal from the 20 to go up 22 to 10. 13 minutes to go and a half. And we probably would have forced him to kick three there if we could have made the tackle in the open field, Browning. Yep, tough break. That's where you went for, go for the upper body. You want to make the big hit, but they can't run. I don't think this team's uh, certainly going to overpower us all afternoon. If we would just stop setting them up in such excellent field position, certainly we could be very much in this football game here today. Majors and Blanco going to set up behind the quarterback. Baumgartner sends a man in motion to the right. Back to pass. Taking a look for the end zone. Goes over the middle. Pass is caught for two by Kenny. So that'll make it 24 to 10 with 13 minutes to go back in a moment. Big games and you just can't give it away to the other team. Five play, 31 yard drive there off a turnover. Kickoff short going to be taken to the 25 by Kelvin Pierce out over the 30 to the 35 and down at about the 39 yard line. Well, we continue to improve field position wise. Seems like about every time we get the football. So uh, maybe we're going to be able to get the six on here now and get back in this football game. 20 ball sides, certainly their pro look. Play action fake. McClinic back, good pass rush. Look out, Kell. He's in trouble. Now he's scrambling, and he'll be down at about the 35-yard line. Pass pocket collapsed on him pretty quickly that time. And uh, in there to make the tackle on the sack was Kevin Dietz. Kind of worried about a knee there. Dietz kind of got on his back, and at 265 pounds, that's quite a load for Kelly. He was trying to <laughs> flip him off like, <laughs> like uh, a Kind of like a bad cold, and uh, he couldn't uh, shake him off, and then all of the pressure kind of twisted on that knee. Probably felt like a bad cold when he came down on top of him, but Kelly did a great job. He just, no receivers came back right in the middle of the field with their hands open. He was looking for someone short, but he just couldn't find the dump off, man. 12-11 to go before halftime, 24-10, Stevens Point. Kelly again under pressure, rolling right. Now he's stumbling a little bit, slipping, and down he goes. Another sack, and this is going to be by the linebacker, Bob Bolstead, a freshman out of uh, Partyville, Wisconsin, 215-pounder. And Bolstead uh, is a, a two-year letter winner in this ball club, an all-conference player, and a good outside linebacker for the team. And he came in on a blitz that time, forcing Kelly out of the pocket. And now we're facing third down at about, uh, well, know, they're going to rack up on the... Uh, Scoreboard, 20 yards to go, it looks like, back in the 29-yard line. Pointer, they've outscored Westmar 17-3 to since that point, lead it 24-10. to Clinic straight drop back, good pass protection this time, going to air it out for Todd Skolton downfield, going to be intercepted by Goggard. He got the best of it this time, 35-40, 45-50, and down he goes. Rob White makes the open field tackle. Was there a fumble at the end of the play? The way they were diving in there, no, Geiger still got it, so he'll go down to the 48-yard line. Turnover number four, Brownie, and we're self-destructing here in the first half. Right, well. Pointers on the attack again, and Baumgarten with enough confidence already to probably carry him for the afternoon is gaining more as this day goes on. Keith Majors up the middle. Majors going to go down after just a yard gain or so. Well, Steam isn't really overpowering our defensive people to the point that they're just ramming the ball down our throat when they want to run it but they certainly are giving Baumgartner a lot of good pass protection. Oh, that's right. That's the key, and I'm sure that's what they work on so much in practice. And he's, uh, We've got to him once. We got a sack and pressured him a few times, and he's really really lost it and just got rid of the ball. But, boy, every other time where he's he's got time and got those five or six receivers to find, he hits one. Second down and eight to go. Gain a two on the last play from the 47-yard line. A single setback and split receivers to both sides. Tweet in here is a slot back to pass going to the slant into Theo Blanco. And boy, three people put good shots on him, but he kind of made everybody bounce off. Joey Holmberg tried to nail him in the small of the back. And that's going to be good for another first down as they gain about 13 yards on the play. And that'll move the ball to about the 35 yard line. 11 minutes to go in the first half of this one. 24 to 10. Pointers on top by 14. Again, four Westmar turnovers, three fumbles, and an interception. 
So far, two of the three fumbles have been turned into points, and they're still moving off the interception. It's only the second interception of a clinic pass since September. Back to pass. Flags down in the secondary. Over the middle. Oh, almost intercepted by Westoff, and he dropped it right in the breadbasket, and it just in and out of there. Again, those gloves probably making the difference between a cotton ball and the dropped uh, result. And we're going to have backfield motion against the pointer. This passing look that the pointers are showing here this season. Back to pass. Heavy pressure. They're going to knock Baumgartner down on the screen. 40, 45. Here's Blanco to the 30. 25, 20. Down about the 17-yard line before a mass of white shirts got to him. That time, Westmark, I don't know whether they were really fooled by the screen necessarily. as It was just well executed by the pointers. They had a lot of purple shirts out there. That's right. They really had the wall set up out there. And they just plain outnumbered us when they got on the sideline. And... And Blanco just kind of ducked and darted back behind him and, and just picked his way up the sideline for a first down. Steele Blanco is a junior kid out of Sturgeon Bay, 190-pounder, got 106 balls this year, a lot of them that, of that caliber. He lines up in a lot of different looks, like Notre Dame uses the Tim Brown, but uh, that's a little why you can get to 106 balls. You get used on a lot of the short patterns, a lot of the dump-off patterns, uh, just to the flats and so. That's how you set a national record. Broke it by one this year. And there's Baumgartner just wasting it away as Rodgers and McLeod are putting some heat on. Little by little, we are getting a little extra pressure here from McLeod and Rodgers, our two top pass sackers. And we've got him once today. Takes some time, but they, they are slowly getting to him. He's not a runner. He's not going to scramble on us. But uh, it's still a little more time than I'm sure they'd like to see. we got a penalty here against Westmore, it looks like. Down in the second. They died so often their defense turning the ball over to their offense. And that's partly how they rang up 36 points a game this year. Opportunistic. Back to pass. Dumps one off to Majors to the 10, to the 5, and driven out of bounds at about the 3 by Joey Holmberg, who saved the touchdown. Robert Johnson uh, pushed him toward the sidelines, and Joey drove him on off. First half, 24 to 10 pointers, and they're going to line up at a power eye. First time they've shown this look this afternoon with double tight ends. They're thinking of running it, apparently. Going to go to Blanco. He dies for the end zone. Touchdown. Just got there. Blanco in from 3 yards away. That'll increase the margin of difference now to 20 points at 30 to 10. And it may be Nellie Bar the gate here pretty soon if Westmark can't get something going offensively. 9.46 left to go in this first half. A lot of football left here this afternoon. And certainly the pointers have had everything going their way in the first uh, half of football, Keith. That's right. You just turn over as we've got to go back to it. And we got to capitalized on another one here. Got the big interception, got a run back on it, set him up midfield, and drove it on in. Joe Parrish going to try the point after. Apparently, Dietz lost his job, and he missed the extra point. They really had their walls trying to kick extra points this year. Dan Toyne holding. Kick is up. Looks right through the middle this time, and it is. 31 to 10 with 9.46 to go in the half. Back in a moment. Pointer's going to squib the kick. Going to be taken by Frenchie Holmberg at about the 25, 35, and out over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Ball trickles out of there, but it was after the fact. Frenchie, I don't think he's returned to kickoff all year into that one, but it came short on the squib, and Frenchie got back there quickly to run it down. Pointers, as you mentioned during the commercial break there, Keith, uh, a very loose football team now. Well, things are going good. They're home. They're, they're walking around smiling. The momentum is, is really swung on their side now. They got the big lead, and it's just... Kind of like it, and sometimes that makes it worse for you. That seems like anything they do works right, and, and this makes it that much tougher for you. No question, uh, they have things in hand now, leading at 31 10. Westmar with the highest scoring average per game of anybody in the country, I guess, can't shy away of the fact they can still put points up and do it quickly, but they haven't been able to run the football, and that's the, been the problem. Going to Charles Hill, and he'll go down for a loss back at the 41 yard line. They have not been able to get outside at all, and they tried again on the quick pitch. Something that's been a successful play many times this season, but again, they're just too—they flow too well to the outside to do that. That's right. They, they, everybody really attacks the line of scrimmage. Even the linebackers, I watch them on that play. They're—they're they're really hardly making a read. Their first move is right to the line, and that's where they want to attack. They don't want anything to go go for yardage, and and that so far that's really been intimidating Westmark. That in essence is the uh, I guess the whole theory behind the hammer defense, as they call it. Get to the uh, line of scrimmage and shut things down right there. McClinic back to pass. Heavy rush, and he'll go down for the sack back at the 29-yard line. Got to worry about Kelly's health a little bit. Uh, you know, behind him, it's Marcus Hancher, and Hancher is hardly fit enough to play quarterback, I don't think. I'd be very surprised if they put him in a QB, and then you go to freshman Chad Samich, who was guiding the purple and gold of Denison High School last year, and I don't think he's ready for quite this caliber of ball game yet. 
And you'd hate to think you'd have to play a half maybe with that kind of an experience for the rest of the day. Trailing already by 21 points at 31 to 10. Eight and a half to go before intermission. Kelly McClinic going to split the backs. They haven't even gone. Uh, they've gone away entirely from the wishbone now. It's not a real good catch-up offense. You've got to go airborne to get back in the game. Going to the screen. Pierce going to go out of the 25. Out of bounds right there, and they'll lose some more yardage. Going the wrong direction. That's a loss of five again, and Westmeyer will bring on the punt unit. Well, give Randy Schmeisel and his staff some credit. They're still picking and probing, trying to find something that will work. But right now... Uh, Stevens Point knows they've got Westmore out of their normal attack, their normal mode, and a catch-up roll, something we haven't had to do much of this year. And they've got us right where they want us. For the ball. Rob White back at about his own nine to punt the football away, and Theo Blanco back to receive it. Oh, Rob took a little extra time and just did get it out of there. Ball going to hit it about. He was ducking and just going down, and had he not, he'd have sure paid for it. Well, it's a matter of pride now if you can't get back in the ball game before halftime, 31-10, to 10, and Westmar needs something to happen. Defense has got to get them back in the game with a turnover. Well, this defense has done it before, and, and they definitely cannot give them any more points right now. It's uh, get the ball here or get the ball another driver and some points and be right back into it. Even in the third quarter, you could do that, but they just can't let them have any more points here. They can get in there. That's right. Again, another little kind of a dump-off type screen. It, they didn't set it up quite like they did the last one. That was more of a, a kind of a little delayed flare, so to speak. They did have a blocker pulling out in front of him, and again, they had, had the bodies out there and got a first down for him. This uh, university is riding the crest of success right now. They've got both their men's and women's cross-country teams running in the national meet today, qualifying for that. Their women's team with the national team, uh, ice hockey team's off to a good start. There's the pass. Oh, Blanco takes it on the slant in, and Frenchie Holmberg going to put a good lick on him at about the 46-yard line. Westmore's putting the hits on they're looking for, but these uh, pointers are coming right back from him. That's right. This Blanco kid's tough, and he bounced right up, too. He said, that's all right. He hit me down, but I got nine yards on you. So <laughs> they, he got the edge on that one, but it's, you got to hit him hard and take him down and hopefully try and draw that ball loose. Picked up about nine and a little slanting over the middle. Yeah, Blanco got up, kind of clapped in Frenchie's face. Uh, it's a little game of intimidation right now, and uh, <laughs> right now I think the pointers are making their noise heard on the scoreboard, leading at 31-10. to 10. Was 7-7. Play action fake. Baumgartner with a moving pocket this time. It's something unusual for him. Throws in the run. Going to hit May a mailing downfield. And Frenchie Holmberg takes him out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Good for another first down, though. Catch of about 13 yards. 20-yard lines where they're going to spark that spot that one. It's first and 10 with the pointers. And they're on the move again. This again off a punt, not a turnover this time that they're driving on. But this make it about three, four straight drives now. This found Pater. Back to pass. Quick slant in. Well, had a knock free from the hand, I guess. A uh, incomplete pass with a rule. I kept looking downfield with the ball, and it never came. And back up field, it just kind of trickled away on the ground. So somebody caught the arm, and as he was coming through, and jarred it out of there. So incomplete pass. Good pass rush again, I guess, getting your credit for that. Yeah, Coach Schmeza was a little concerned about fatigue by halftime with the secondary, and right now they've been on the field much more than he'd hoped. The offense just can't seem to keep him off the field. Back to pass. Baumgartner, a little jittery in the pocket. Now fires one to Blanco. Another spectacular hit. And Westoff really laid a crack into the side of the headgear. This time, Blanco's not getting up so fast. Well, he really took a shot, and then Westoff just got up and looked at him and walked away. And there's a lot of frustration there. And, and boy, Kevin doesn't like what's going on out here, but there he even fell to the ground. Yeah, Blanco is stunned on that one. He really got dinged, and that hurt me clear up here. Yeah, I could actually feel it. We got a glass window down here in front of it. I could just hear that pop, and they got to be a little careful because I think he took in the shoulders and the head. Look at that one on the uh, films on Sunday night, folks. You that are tuned in live here because that was a big-time hit. That may be the hit of the year right there. That was really a stick. This Blanco kid is a tough kid. He's solid, uh, 100 and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, about 190 pounds, and he's a solidly built young man. But, boy, that was a big-time hit there, and it. That would have put even a bigger guy than that probably down, and he's not even able to make it to the sidelines in a sitting position, and uh, that's concussion-type type hit. And yeah. whether he'll see any more action today is uh, questionable. He really got a shot. He did get up and walk off. Pass over the middle to Tweet, his first catch of the day, and the pass complete to about the 10 for the first down. A little slant in. Well, that's not deterred him from going over the middle for the slants. That's right, and... And a good reaction, Baumgartner. That time our corners were lined up 10 yards off, and that's what they'll take that five yard and slant. And, and a good hit on the play, but they said, that's all right. We got our first down. It was third and short, and now it's first and goal. Medical people are looking over at Theo Blanco right down here on their bench in front of us. They're looking in those eyes to see whether he's capable of coming back in. In on the play now is Barry Rose, freshman out of Baldwin, Wisconsin. 
Quick pitch to Barry Rose, and Rose going to carry to about the 11 yard line. And uh, we see McLeod and Westoff up off the pile. Kurt Westoff, you know, was very questionable all week after suffering of his term to hernia or, pulse or torn stomach muscle, if you will, uh, in that Dakota Wesleyan ball game that eventually forced him out early. But I think he'd about had to tie him to a. <laughs> That's right. Tied him to a chair back uh, in Lamar's to keep him out of this ball game. He was in practice gear all week, never missed a practice, I don't think. And uh, here's a kid that was looking forward to playing in this ball game. Gave a nice talk to the Lamar's football team at their banquet earlier this week as he came back to his old high school alma mater. Back to pass Baumgartner. Good rush from McLeod. And going to dump it off to Major. Stiff arms one man inside the 10 and out of bounds at about the six yard line. Again, the Westmar wave of blue was coming in. Looking for the bullseye again, and where was Westoff? I think they've got his number picked out, and <laughs> they're not wanting to challenge him too many more times today. Down Four. and first down. 4.27 to go before halftime. 31 to 10 pointers, and they're looking for more. Running out of the shotgun with a spread formation. Back to pass. Three people come to the left. He's looking for one of them over the middle. Touchdown. He was so smothered by the defensive man, Troy Stanley, we can't even pick a number out. Going to be mailing again. That big tight end coming off the line of scrimmage. Got a holding call. Got a holding call against the pointers, so that's going to wipe this one out. It's about 1 to 10, and the pointers just had their last touchdown nullified. So they're faced with third and uh, 15 now. Good. At least force them to the field goal, and that's not too automatic for this ball club. Going to go out of an eye. Back to pass, lobbing it up there for Atron Kinney, and it's off the field incomplete. Coverage by Joey Holmberg. That was best against best there, and Joey, I think, has got the higher percentage of success this year. He's been challenged a lot of times in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I can only remember about three or four times he's been burned this year. From the 15, and they're going to try. Leading 31-10, to 10, I guess. This is uh, not that serious a gamble for him. They're going to try for the touchdown and not even try for three. Back to pass. Taking a look, taking a look. Now the pressure's on, and McLeod at him by the shirt tail. He's out of bounds, and he'll take the loss back at the 25, and Westmark takes over on downs. Hey, hey, there okay. for yeah, two or three plays. Yeah. Seemed down there by Coach uh, Leroy now, so, yeah, he's a <laughs> tough kid. We'll give him that. Back to pass. McClendon coming on the slant, and White going to make the catch, and he'll have it jarred out of there. Goggard comes in and makes the catch, and White is uh, shaken up a little bit. He's still down. I think he came down on a leg wrong. He was hurt, I think, before the hit ever came. He kind of uh, bent the leg back as he came down, and I think it's a knee. I think a knee popped out on him maybe, or a leg injury of some kind as he came down. Could have been a hamstring or anything like that. Lane Bell in there for uh, Rob White as they help him off the field. And the clinic back to pass, and he's going to be sacked at the six-yard line. There's the uh, right end again, Jade Downey. This is a kid again we told you earlier, third string at the start of the year. He's played a heck of a football game here, Brownie. Back in there for the sack. That's right, and Kelly just kind of bailed out of the pocket a little too soon, and he runs the ball a lot better upfield than he does downfield, and this thing is just it's working against him, and these pass rushers are just coming full bore and, and just getting to him too quick. Oh, what a huge loss that was. Now it's third and 30. That was one of those things she just, uh, he couldn't even fall to the ground to stop the backward progress. He gave a stiff arm to uh, Jay Downey and tried to fend him off, and Downey just kept pushing him back and pushing him back, and finally, uh, before he went down, he lost another uh, 15 yards from where the first contact came. It looks like they're... Uh, bringing some uh, medical attention around to the Westmore sideline. I'd guess that'd be for Rob White and maybe going to take him in for a little look-see. There's McClinic rolling into the end zone, sets up, launches her downfield for Shipley, cuts inside, tip to Skolton at the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, down to the 20, to the 50, to the 10, to the 5, and he's caught from behind. Touchdown, saving tackle. Got to be made by Goggert at about the two-yard line. That was offense to offense, uh, apparently legal in this case, and... Uh, Hey, we'll take it. We needed a big one to get us back and uh, rolling again and get some uh, confidence built up once again. That's right. It was a big break to, to catch the ball after the tip. It should have been caught on the first tip, but, oh, boy, it would have been nice to have those points. I don't think he knew the man was that close to him. He could have veered off to the side and, and got in there. But needless to say, that's the big play we needed here in the second quarter. Skolton probably one of the fastest on the ball club, and he couldn't outrun the uh, defensive man that he's been beating a big share of the afternoon, Goggert. Timeout for Westmar with 2.43 to go. That was a big pass play. So playoff history. So we'll kind of check the record books. We've got that available to us. Out of the wishbone now. There's McClinic going to just uh, keep it and, and fumble it. He goes down back at the 10, and the pointers are on it again. we got a flag down late on the play. 
Could we get a break here? That flag was thrown almost after the fact, though, and I couldn't see really what was going on. Pointers are all huddled up around the referee. They, of course, have a lot of interest in this. Boy, what a bad turnover this would be. Kelly was just uh, rolling as he has done successfully in the second half of the season. Penley's going to go against the pointers. First and goal, so we get a second shot at this end zone. Shipley going to line up tight end to the right, and they're going to go out of the deuce backfield with split receivers to the left side. Blaine Bell and uh, Todd Skolton. Rob Weitzman probably knocked out of the game. Going over the middle, incomplete. No flag thrown, but boy, there was close to some early contact there. Shipley was the intended receiver. Scott Nikolai out of the secondary came up and uh, either well-timed hit or it was too early and it kept Shipley from going down and uh, digging that one out of the turf. On set now with a split receiver to the left side. Straight ahead, Vernon Bolden. Bolden's going to power into the end zone. Eagles signal touchdown. Referee hasn't given us that call, though. Calvin Pierce asking for... Uh, the touchdown call, Kelly McClinic pleading for it. Apparently it wasn't a touchdown. They're still in stacking bodies. Touchdown, there it is. Boy, that's the latest touchdown call I've ever seen. That's right, and coaches will tell you, even if you think you're over the end zone, keep pushing because sometimes it's, you're not called a touchdown until they get you unpiled, and that might have even happened there, but you'll say we got the points. Now he's caught one and ran for nine, so yeah, Bolden to that touchdown takes over the team lead with 11. And Mike Morey tries to stay perfect on PATs. That one is up, but flags down all over. It's good. Will it stand? It's going to be good. 31 to 17. Westmar got a much, much needed touchdown there. A two-yard run by Vern Bolden with uh, 209 left to go. Could have been more costly than any of them. Ruled out by a penalty. That we'll see if we can find an explanation on here at halftime on what exactly was called. Kenny again slips as he goes after the kickoff. Takes it at the nine to the 20, to the 25, and he breaks a tackle. Brad Crotzel had him and tried to strip the ball out of there, and then he got away from him. Finally, he goes down at about the 29-yard line. There's going to send receivers to both sides. In fact, uh, no setbacks going to their spread offense, and Baumgartner quarterback. Well, that should have woke up the pointers a little bit. They're not going to coast to victory today. Going to give to Barry Rose. Rose to the 25, to the 30, and he'll go to about the... 36, 37 yard line before he's run out of bounds by uh, Scott Seeloff. That was a five play, 75 yard drive for Westmar. An 87 yard pass play though helped set it up. Bolden from two yards away with 201 to go in the half to put Westmar back to within two touchdowns, 31 17. So we are seeing the offense we thought we would, although Westmar's not overpowering them with a running game like we expected. They're having to go airborne like the pointers. Baumgartner rolling to the right, McLeod pursuing. Now Bob Nigerner is going to run. 35, 40, gets to the outside, and he's uh, trying to get to the sidelines, but uh, J.R. had him cut off of the pass, so he just ducked under, and uh, he gets out to the 45-yard line. He loves the sidelines, and J.R. was there saying... Uh, when he got close to him, he never did, but he finally got to go down. But first down for him. Out of the shotgun again, takes a look. Rush is there as Westhoff is blitzing and a left the man open. Mailing makes the catch over the middle. Troy Stanley going to take him down at about the 38-yard line. Troy Stanley again uh, getting his first varsity opportunity and a big opportunity here. He has not played a lot of secondary, and that inexperience has maybe hurt him a time or two today, Keith. Went a little high there, got the man down, but we had the big blitz on, and Kevin just went by him. He had to have a little more control, but couldn't sack him. In the final minute of the first half, 31-17. Baumgartner lays one out her for Kenny, makes the catch at about the 25-yard line. And Kenny going to shake, be shaken up on the play as Seeloff got a pounced on him, and uh, Atron Kenny going to go down. So Theo Blanco has been wrapped pretty hard by Kurt Westhoff to sideline him for a couple of plays. Go. First down, of course, stopped the clock momentarily. Now it's on the move again, and Baumgartner trying to hustle him into the end zone. Rifles one over the middle, kind of skips on one hop to him. That was intended for the tight end mailing. Time left, we have to make him have three or four in or incompletions here. Baumgartner out of the shotgun again. Spread offense, going to go on the quick one, going on a quick screen to Kenny. Kenny going to make the catch, and uh, Westhoff going to stop him at about the 22-yard line. and only get about four yards and had to stay in bounds, and it looks like we've got a timeout taken by the pointers. Baumgartner got him set down. He's going to send Barry Rose in motion to the right. Majors the lone setback. Back to pass. Going back across the green. Throws behind his man, Barry Rose. He was wide open. He had gone underneath the umbrella. But 
And of course, they're into the wind, so no thought of a field goal here. They passed on that earlier into the wind and scored the touchdown. So come on, defense. Baumgartner out of the shotgun, drops back, takes a look, takes a look. Wanting for at gone to go to Atron Kenny for the end zone. It is going to be incomplete. Scooped it off the ground. Eagles had good coverage. Troy Stanley was there and uh, Joey Holmberg and the senior. Joey Holmberg came back high-fiving Troy Stanley. A sophomore out of Bagley did a good job there, Keith. Was right where he needed to be. 12 right. seconds to go before halftime. Be a little surprised. Westmore tried to get anything big here. Going to line up with two backs. Bolden and Hill in the backfield. Pierce going to be out there as a slot. Oh, they are going long. Going down for Blaine Bell. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Scott Nikolai was setting up for the interception. Didn't quite backpedal far enough, and it went through the hands. Halftime, we're going to try and visit later in the half anyway with Scott Arother, a Roker, the SID here. Maybe he can give you a little insight into the Stevens Point area. It is a very beautiful community. And uh, Kelly McClinic this time is going to drop to one knee, and they took one shot at it, and they decided to sit on it. A 14-point deficit. And I don't know about you, Keith, but I feel pretty fortunate to only be 14 down as uh, shaky as a first. Stevens Point in Westmar. And we're underway in the second half. It's a squibbing kick by McPartland. It'll be taken by Barry Rose at about the 35, and he's out of the 40 to about the 43-yard line. And the pointer is going to put her in action right there. Check it, not Barry Rose. Lee Clark, one of the defensive uh, backs, uh, makes the carry upfield for the pointers. He's kind of team pointers up by two touchdowns. But the second quarter, second half of that second quarter, saw Westmar's defense start to shut down some of that passing attack. There's the give to Majors going off the left side of the 45 and near midfield. Westoff missed a tackle at about the 47 and then got some help with Freddie Anderson and Dan Crotzel. And the last man up was uh, Troy Stanley. Up some there. mistakes on some hits. He's hit too high, but he's still in there and he's still trying and doing the best he can. That's all Coach Mayer wants. From the eye, there's the give straight up the middle to Barry Rose. And Barry Rolls going to dive to about the 46-yard line. Yeah, I think President R. Richardson of the send-off pep rally back on Thursday said it best. Said, guys, we're proud of you right now, regardless of what happens for the rest of the weekend. And I think all of Lamar's would echo in that. Uh, we are proud of the season they have put together. Eight and two, it's one of the best in uh, the school's history. Play yeah. by about the length of the football as they stretch the chains. Baumgartner sets them in a... Pro set with deuce backs and split receivers to both sides. Going to go again on the running play to Majors. And a good hit there by Frenchie Holmberg. Comes up and just buries the head down to the kneecaps and takes him down at about the 45-yard line. This is a little bit of way I thought the pointers would come out in the ball game, maybe and open up with just a little bit of run to check the defense out and kind of make them play honest and then start going airborne. They come out throwing right away. Now they're starting the second half of the running game. Yeah, and I guess if you look at the situation they are in, here all of a sudden we fumble the ball. All of a sudden, momentum, they wanted to stick it in fast and hard and get points off that, and that's why they went right to their pass, I think, and, and that kind of kept them in it. But now they got the clock and the time. They want to grind time off and grind the ball. Second down at eight, and they're going to the passing game now. There's Baumgartner on the roll, throws down complete to Kenny. There are no check it to Mailing. Mailing makes the catch. Joey Holmberg drops him at the 30, but it's a first down of the pointers. Time Joey kind of slipped and fell, and Kenny or mailing, I should say, was open then to make the catch. That's right. Joey was down on the ground when he made the play. The, the, the pattern carried the man right into him, and, and he made the tackle on But if Joey not have fallen, he might have had a little better chance of getting in and break that up. But, again, there's that, that nice rollout pattern that, that they run so much here and, and got the, got another first down for him. 15-yard gain on that, and they're on the move again. The purple and gold of the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, conference champions up here. There's Prince in motion to the left. Going to go to Barry Rose, and Rose going to carry to about the 31-yard line. Well, Theo Blanco's not in here. Remember, he got stung by that Westoff hit, and he has not been in here yet to start second half. Barry Rose is in here in his place. He did walk off uh, to start the uh, beginning of halftime. We saw him walk off, but I don't see number eight down there. Might be a precaution, too, Denny. I guess at this point they're thinking, hey, we're ahead in this. If we hang on, we've got a game next weekend, and it might be kind of a precautionary thing. They don't want to use him, and they might have checked him out of halftime and, and declared him not quite capable of play. I see a guy down there with a jacket on the sidelines on the bench and players coming over and talking to him. That might be him. We'll kind of keep a check on it. Back to pass Baumgartner. Whoa, he got hit in the small of the back as he let her go, and he's kind of slow getting up. That one hurt. Pass is incomplete. Tried in mailing again. Boy, he got stuck in the small of the back, and uh, being an old QB, that hurts about as much as anything. That's right. Third down at about seven to go. There's Prince in motion to the left. 
Backpedaling, heavy rush, going to the screen, tip, tip, tipped, and almost caught, almost intercepted and almost caught. That was Westoff that had a hand on it. Rogers tipped it, then Westoff tipped it, and then uh, one of the players from uh, Stevens Point, I think Barry Rose, the intended receiver on that screen to the left, tipped it. And they in the their kicking game, place kicking game, is kind of a weak spot with them. They missed an extra point. They have kicked one field goal, but into the wind as they're driving here to start the second half. Makes this decision for him over the middle. That's going to be incomplete. He had it and lost it. And a good hit there from uh, Westoff. Nope, check it. Troy Stanley makes the uh, dislodging of the football from Mailing, and the Eagles have stopped him on the first possession of the second half to take over. The yard line. Going to go with the split backs. Again, they're kind of going completely away from the wishbone. They just obviously feel they can't move it on the ground against this football team from their standard wishbone set. Going to go to Skolton at the 31-yard line. I think Randy, you know, we read some of the uh, pregame press clippings of information they had gotten from Coach Maisel and from his office, and he'd misled him a little bit, I think, in what we like to do. He'd call us pretty much a veer look, and we have been pretty much a wishbone team for the second half of the season. And actually what's turned out is we are pretty much a veer team now for the day with a, a very strong passing look. So uh, I don't think he intended to... Uh, play this kind of a ball game today but he's been forced to it and all of his pregame information kind of came back to haunt him he has been pushed out of his wishbone attack there's a quick opener to Charles Hill Hill going to carry it at the 34 yard line well, Charles I know I talked to him at practice this week and he hasn't missed any practices after uh, sitting out the Dakota Wesleyan ball game of the ankle sprain he told me he was 99.9% .9 healthy I don't think he's that that strong <clears throat> no it's tough to you know like we talked about before you really got to test an ankle and and uh, yeah, he could probably run wind sprints just as fast as he could before and things like that. But really to make them hard cuts, really rely on that ankle 100%, that's, that's, that's the big question mark. And you just got to go out and do it and hopefully not re-injure it. 10.26 to go in the third quarter. 31-17, Stevens Point just done away in the second half. Quick throw out here to Skolton and it's one hopper. Kelly McClinic's got a lot of heat today. He's had trouble getting anything to really go well for him. It's been big plays basically for Westmore through the air that's kept their offense uh, in this football game. To go and Mike Moore is into punt so Rob White must be out of this one. Didn't see what he hurt earlier but we'd kind of guess maybe a leg injury a knee of some kind and there's the punt away from the return people and that's going to go out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Well, that was, Again he's just got the kind of the the slow steps uh, after getting the snap. He is going to have to speed it up or he might go and block Stevens Point takes over their own 32. There's Barry Rose on the carry, and they're very run-oriented here to open the second half. He'll carry out to the 35. I guess it wouldn't hurt it. We picked up some time in this game. <laughs> That's been a long one to this point. That's right. We're stretching out, but right now with Stevens Point with the ball, we don't want them to, to grind it down, and and I sure sure hate to see this turn of defensive battle because that sure isn't going to help Westmar. We need points, and we got to have the ball to do that. Well, remember way back at the start of the week and where Andy first labeled this one, the Battle of David and Goliath, he just wanted to come over here. Well, he wasn't going to come over here and just give up, uh, but he, he felt if we could just play respectably against him, it'd be quite a boost for the school. To upset him would be the win of the, of the century, really. He felt he was labeling it as that big of a win. Barry Rose, oh, a head hunting hit there by uh, Frenchie Holmberg. Those kind of hits uh, usually get a negative reaction from uh, the opponent's sideline and that was kind of the case he just neck collared him that's right he really took him down hard and uh, we've seen that all year these Holmberg brothers can really lay it on you and you look at them walking around they're not the biggest guys they're they line up eye to eye with me Danny so I know they're a little bit boy they can really hit and really go out here and play and they're, they're heads up they're really smart players too so I'd say even if the thing ended this way right now, 31-17, Randy, it'd be elated the way the kids have come back, and he'd know that we didn't play far from our best game of the year. McLeod with a heavy rush on the screen, and now the screen man, Barry Rose, is going to be taken down by Dan Crotzel, a big loss. That was either going to be a big sack, and as it turned out, when he got the pass off, it was a big loss in the pass catch, and we had all bases covered there. Uh, be forced to punt. It's only about their uh, third or fourth punt of the ball game. And again, Westmar stops him. They're two for two. Defensively, come with a block, and he got it. There's the block, and it's going to be recovered by Westmar back at the nine-yard line. I didn't see who got in there to make the block, but the Eagles have come out of there with it. There's the big play we were looking for, and the specialty team gave it to us. That's right, Denny, and boy, they came at it. You'd think they'd have been ready for it, but Westmar had them all coming, and boy, everybody broke through there. 
Now we need points. We've got to convert this, and that's the important thing. We got the first step. Now we need to take the second. Play, and uh, we try to pick the number out of who made the block on it. I guess we'll have to watch it on the replay on Sunday night. But Kelly McClinic's got him set down. First and goal on the 70 yard line. Chance to draw back to within a touchdown. They're in the wishbone. There's Bolden up the middle, and Bolden going to run like he has run all season. And he's inside the five down to about the three yard line. And the Eagles, I'm sure, got a talking to by Coach Mazel at halftime, and he made it very plain. Remember, gentlemen, we came here to win this football game. We haven't played a very good first half, but we're here in position just like we want to be. We can beat these guys. That's right, and the breaks can go the other way, too. And we just got one here, and, and boy, that's good to see Vernon. They don't arm tackle him up the middle, and I think they might just stay on the ground with it here and try and get six. Well, they're going to run uh, out of a deuce backfield mix up in the backfield Kelly McClinic breaks a tackle now he's looking now he's running he's back inside the 10 and out of bounds at about the four yard line that time uh, Vern Bolden was supposed to get the handoff there and he slipped as he tried to make his takeoff and then Kelly bumped into him cut up a clinic for getting that back to uh, close to the line of scrimmage That's what, uh, a little whippersnappers from Mars, Iowa this campus of 450 we believe the smallest playing college football right now and definitely the smallest to ever make the playoffs. McClinic going for Skolton, and Todd couldn't catch up to it. So now it's fourth down and goal from the four-yard line. McClinic already says he wants to go for it. Well, they made the decision. They're going for it, and Westmore's going to line up in a wishbone set. Kelvin Pierce to the left, Charles Hill to the right, and they've got Vern Bolden to the left-back spot. Todd Skolton split wide to the right. Tim Shipley tight end to the left side. McClinic going to roll to the left. Looks, looks, throws for Pierce. He's got a touchdown. Westmar got the big play, Brownie. That's right, and boy, what a pretty pattern, and had some pressure on Kelly. Really got him open. We got Pierce down on his hands and knees, clear out on the track, and we'd hate to see that, but he did get the six points. And he's getting up limping. I know that was kind of on the scouting report. That was the last thing Coach Mazel said to the team in their workout in Lamar's on Thursday. He said, gentlemen, our scouts uh, tell us and our films show us that this team likes to take shots at you on the sideline. So uh, just don't let them have that opportunity, and we don't want to get anybody hurt that way. And Kelvin kind of relaxed after making the touchdown catch, and he got nailed from behind and on off the field. Morey going to try to stay perfect. On placement, that one looks good from here. It splits the crossbars. Westmar is back to within a touchdown at 31-24. 7-14 to go in the quarter. Back in a minute. Patron Kenny makes the return back across the 15 to the 20 for the pointers, and he's down at about the 26-27 yard line. And the Westmore Eagles have drawn back to within a touchdown after the block punt. We got word that Dan Dan Toyn had his first punt blocked of his career on that one. Well, he, he picked a good time for it, Denny. I can't. I got to echo that. It's too bad he had that string broken. But Westmore got a few breaks coming, and boy, they had a good rush on. Really, that you know, punts a play. They can call it a bad break, but we outdid them on that play and, and benefited from it. That's really the first turnover of the ball game, and Westmore was able to capitalize on theirs. Pointers have turned three of four turnovers into touchdowns. And Westmar not playing their best game by any way, shape, or form, still in this ball game and could win it yet. Baumgartner back to pass, rolling left, now takes a look, Crotzel in his face, McLeod there, pass is complete to Barry Rose, and he's going to be hit from uh, both sides, down at about the 36, 37 yard line. Got a yard drive for Westmar. Took him a minute to go those seven yards after the block kick. There's the get of Barry Rose. Big hole off tackle, 40, 45, and down at about the 49-yard line. Barry Rose in a cloud of dust right down the middle of the field. Pass catcher, and he set an NAI record this year for catching passes. Here's Baumgartner rolling to the left. Rolling, rolling, hit as he lets it go. Juggling and drop finally by Majors. Frenchie Holmberg broke that one up. I'll tell you, these uh, Westmar defensive backs are starting to play with that bit of cockiness that they've had to, that's carried them to success through the year. The last stages of quarter three in this NAI National Playoff game. And it's got the wind chills down there in the teens to 20s, I'm sure. Pass over the middle and almost picked off. Should have had one. Westhoff had one in his hands, went through it, but that's a has-been. 5.51 to go before three quarters is history. Back to pass. Baumgartner up in the pocket, throws a bullet to Kenny, breaks a tackle, and Westhoff takes him down at about the 33-yard line. Stop him twice, but he'll hit you on the third one. That's, the, I guess, the key to a passing game. First and 10 down to the Westmore 32-yard line. It's a little of Westmore's game plan now. They had planned to let him catch some underneath him, but when the field got short, they felt they could stop him. This team has a tendency to kind of self-destruct in their close. Big hole for Barry Rose. Inside the 25, inside the 20, inside the 10, and down about the six-yard line. Quick opener for the pointers, and boy, did that hole open up on their right side. 
Can they muscle it in? That's the question. Baumgartner going to come back up uh, over center. Derek Brown, uh, uh, Bowne uh, is there, sir. Bowen is their center. Derek Bowen. There's the give to Majors. Going to be tripped up in the backfield. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one. And and Robert Johnson going to take him off the field. McLeod had a chance, or Utick had a chance. And McLeod then secondly had a chance to take him down to the backfield. He just slipped those tacklers and uh, ran on out of bounds. Keith, wide right and uh, tweet here wide to the left side and running out of a pro set with split backs behind the quarterback, Kirk Baumgartner. Sophomore out of Colby, Kansas. There's the, or Colby, uh, Wisconsin, I should say. There's a give back up inside to uh, Majors. Majors is going to send him out in uh, kind of a pro set with both wideouts to the left side. The backs are split, and they'll probably both be out. Now they send Barry Rose in motion to the right side. Baumgartner backpedaling, takes a look, pumps. Now it trips, and down he goes at about the 14-yard line. Tripped over one of his blockers. Westmar was going to smother him anyway, I think. And there's Kratzel and Mike Rogers there to make the hit on him. And uh, a big sack, Brownie. Stocker Styler out of Watertown, Wisconsin, going to come on and, and uh, try to uh, put this one through from the 20-yard line. Be 30-yard kick. This is into the wind. A little bit of a crosswind to him. And soccer stylers don't like the straight-on kicks. That's a tough kick for them. A high snap. Westmore almost got a hand in there. And this was going to be wide to the left. In fact, Joey Holmberg's going to catch it and run it out to the goal line. Now up to the 10. Dives to about the 16, 17-yard line. Flags all over the place. I don't know, as it turned out, well, that was a wise decision to come out with. It would have been on the 20-yard uh, line. But Westmore's going to take over with no points surrendered. So bright tells down on the goal line. Uh, quarterback sacked really set that up. Put the pressure on the pointers for the fourth down, and they chose to try the field goal into the wind, and the wind kind of blew it off course. Well, that's going to put the Eagles to the eight-yard line. Kelly McClinic backs it up, pumps, now rolls into the end zone, now airs it out. Skolton is wide open. He's behind his man, catches at the 35, 40, and driven out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. If he could have thrown a bullet down there that far, it would have been a score probably, but Dan Dantoin had a chance to get over there from the free safety spot and cover up from McClinic to Skolton. Those two who came into the game with 17 connections this year, they'll make it just 15 for those two. Hancher hit him twice for touchdowns back in the Midland ball game, but they've been the big combo today. There's uh, Charles Hill back up inside. And uh, Hill going to carry for a couple out to about the 47-yard line for Westmart halftime, a team that averaged uh, up there in the 321 yards per game category with their wishbone attack. They've gotten completely out of the wishbone pretty much now. There's uh, McClinic running for his life. Now he's bought some time, wasted. Kell pumps, pumps. Now he's going to run with it, and he'll go down to the 50-yard line. He'll end up picking up a little yardage on that, as it turns out. Kell gets a couple of yards. And... Uh, out of the wishbone now with a split receiver to the left side. Play action pass. Back to pass. Kelly going to unload it downfield for Skolton. And he got it over the wrong shoulder. Gocker gave him a little bit of a push that he got away with there. And uh, Skolton was turning over one shoulder, then the other, and it fell behind him. And uh, that's going to bring up a, a, well, penalty. Got a penalty back up field. It was a late hit. Roughing the passer, I'd sure. Looked like they called it. Okay. Uh, Kelly uh, did turn at the last minute. Took a hit in the back. Instead, first down to the pointer, 35, and now it's the pointers that are hurting themselves with a, a block punt, and now a penalty gives Westmar life out of the wishbone set. Pointers are fake and blitz, gives to Bolden off tackle to the left side, and Bolden inside the 35, about the 32-yard line. Kind of slides, and they run inside. That's right. She's broke up out there, and there have been a lot of ball games on this field. It's a, uh, 49 yards in pass catching. That's a new NAI playoff record. The old record was 185. He's just shattering it here today, and he's still got another quarter to go. Back to pass, taking a look. Kelly airing it out for Skolton down the middle. Todd tips, tips, and can't hang on. Oh, that was almost a spectacular catch for six. That could have tied it. It's, yeah, he's got to be getting close to that one. 31-24, Westmore down by touchdown, faced with a third down at about seven to go. Play action by lookout, Kell. Whoa, he breaks the tackle, in trouble again. And there's a fumble. And they're going to rule he was down prior to the fumble. The flag goes down. Got an eagle down. Slow getting up. And that's uh, Polly. It looks like Tim Polly, But he's all right. And let's see what the penalty is. It's got to be holding. I'm sure there was somebody that was probably tackled. Can get some field position here. Well, Westmar tried a trick play they were working on before they left town on Thursday. Uh, the pointers run a lot of people on the field when they change uh, personnel. <laughs> I have anyway. And frustrate him a little bit. 
They had it going. It was going to work. But the referee stepped in and stopped the play by the end of the quarter. So. Well, still might have been a timeout call. I saw players running off signal. It? For yet a trip into the second round of the NAI National Playoff Series here. A chance to upset the pointers on their home field. Mike Moore just got that off of there. Unbelievably uh, slow and setting that one up. Somehow he got it out of there, though. Not a real long kick. In fact, he didn't even kick for the first down. But Not that uh, the Eagles would be able to stay with this, uh, what looked like a very potent University of Wisconsin Stevens Point football team. But I think they're as big of believers in Westmar football now and the scrap that we have in our football players as anybody in this stadium. And they're showing a lot of signs of total respect now. Baumgartner caught from behind. Down he goes. McLeod with a sack as he uh, got him around the ankles. There's that... Uh, Lack of mobility, I guess, by Baumgartner. They got him caught there. About 15, lost five in the play. Baumgartner beginning to hear the hoof beats now. He's starting to leave the pocket early as the rush is starting to put some pressure on him and help those D-backs out a little bit. They are playing a spectacular second half. They've shut the pointers out so far in the second half. Back to pass over the middle. Incomplete. Nearly picked off again. Troy Stanley had a shot at it. Don't half, and Westmar blocked a punt midway through the third quarter. And took it in to score and a pass from McClinic to Pierce on fourth and goal to the four. Back to pass. Baumgartner fires one over the middle trying to hit Mailing and nobody was uh, looking for it yet. Mailing has, hadn't run his complete pattern yet. And now it's fourth down and five. And there's a little bit of that pass rush making him throw away earlier than he needed to. That's Times right. this year that was uh, tops among the NAI schools in the number of attempts. Second in the nation in passing, second in total offense. And he'll bang this one out, almost blocked there by Westmar again. Safford going to take it at the Westmar 45, and he goes down to the 47-yard line. Joey Holmberg wasn't back there for help that time. It was uh, Safford by himself, and the Eagles haven't run single coverage uh, back on punts too often this year. Mm -hmm. down, it was right into the sun for Cujo, too, to make the catch. Split receivers to both sides. The pro set, deuce backs. McClinic going to drop back. Given ground, given ground. Now he pumps. Now he looks, drops it off to Vern Bolden at the 45, and he's down at about the 50. He'll pick up about three on the play. And with 13.39 to go this afternoon, he got another flag down. Back up field, and the indications are it's going to be against uh, Westmar's offensive line blockers. Holding. Holding. Tough Nebraska to Doan, 9-7. To and they won them all since then, six in a row, and looking for a seventh today. They're trailing 31-24 in a wild offensive battle that we expected it would be. There's the little slant in attempt over the middle, incomplete, trying to get to Shipley, and that was uh, thrown behind him. Yep. We haven't run the ball that much, neither team has here. It's sure in the air. It's going to be a lot of passes, but I don't think it'll approach that record that those two set that day. Back to pass. McClinic, all the time of the world, lofts it over the middle for Blaine Bell. This is going to be intercepted by Dan Dantoin. 40, 45, 50 into Eagle territory to the 45-yard line. Kelly tried to force one that time as Blaine Bell was uh, pretty well covered up by three defensive backs, and he kind of floated it out there. That's what and the pointers come out, first and 10 of the Westmar 46, so that's kind of brought their sidelines to life again. They were kind of down here in the second half. They haven't scored yet. Their offense all of a sudden is sputtering. The Eagles have shut them down. Back to pass. Their top pass catcher knocked out of the game by a hit over the middle, incomplete, trying to go to Prince. They're missing Theo Bell right now. They're Theo uh, Blanco. Well, that's right, and, and Baumgartner's sure off. I don't know that those. I don't know who that pattern was to. The last three passes he's thrown have really been just kind of idle, lame ducks right up the middle there, and he's, he's a little frustrated. He sure had time there. With Blanco out of the ball game, that means they can really concentrate on Atron Kinney, and he hasn't been a force in this half yet. That's right, and Blanco, boy, they line him up anywhere and everywhere, and he's really the one they want to go to. They just look for him, run him short, run him long, and, and he can do so much with the ball once he gets it, and it's it's helping our defense not to have to look for him. 12.56 to go in a ball game, 31-24 pointers. Eagles getting set for the pass rush because he's in the shotgun. They know he's going airborne. Back to pass, taking a look. Rifles one to Atron Kinney at the 30. Now he's running across the field to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he's down at about the 2 as Troy Stanley makes the touchdown saving tackle. Takes him out of bounds inside that 5-yard line. Oh, he spoke too soon. There was Kinney coming back to haunt us right away. That's right, and Baumgartner didn't have any problem hitting that one. A deep curl, and boy, they're so tough, and Kenny's got the speed, came across the field, and really had Westmore on their heels. Don Mailing made the key block, though. He was over here on the sidelines. Kenny set him up, pointed to where he wanted him to block, and he got the block that sprung him for another 10 as he was uh, at that point inside the five, and Stanley saved the touchdown there. Now they're lining up in the power eyes. They do so often down here close. Lee Clark's in there now as a lead blocker. He's the big guy. 
And they're going to go second man through Barry Rose. Try to go over the top and down he goes at the 22. That's your basic uh, power ice uh, formation right. They give it to the tailback behind the two lead blockers. That's right. They ran the whole works and, and Marcus Hancher came in from the outside and that's what they'll do on that. These corners, if they're up tight, there's no man to cover in a pass. Pat, they'll really penetrate hard and he actually got the guy from behind. Tried to uh, go behind Bob Furlong, the right tackle at 275 pounds from nearby Chicago and Right tackle Greg Fictum, a 240-pound senior out of New Holstein, Wisconsin. And that was also their tight inside, Don Mailing, trying to seal him off inside also. Lining up in the power eye again, second and goal from the two. Long count, Baumgartner trying to stretch his lean, lanky body in, and he got in there. He actually broke a tackle and stumbled on into the back of the end zone for the touchdown. And the pointers have scored their first touchdown of the second half. Off the interception, there's three. There are four out of the five turnovers now converted to points. Yeah, that's really the, the backbreaker for us. We might not have got a first down on the intersection. At least we'd have punted and not give them such good field position. And, and, and I guess we knew this team was going to score again the second half. They're just too good an offensive team, and we just got to make this the last one now. 11.50 to go in the ball game. That'll make it 37-24, and Parrish is going to try to uh, tack on another point. Dan Dantoin, who made the interception to set up the score, Whoa, he fumbles the center snap. It was high. Parrish in here with it now. He's going to throw. Completes the pass to Porzorski, but it's short of the end zone. And the two-point try, as it turns out, no good. Oh, but it's starting to set down toward the horizon now. And it's uh, coming right in our viewpoint here on the booth to the pointer side. Burn Bolden from the 5 to the 10 to the 15. Out over the 15, about the 18, 19 yard line. Fumble again, but I think it was after the fact. They're scrambling for the football. Boy, this especially team stuff's been adventuresome today. That's right. It's been a cross your fingers, and boy, they ruled out a live fumble at Vernon Bolin again, having a hard time hanging on to it, and got into a big pile there. And I just thought they were going to rule that dead, but they Back again swing some momentum now. We got Blaine Bell split wide to the left. Got a slot here to the left side now, and a lone setback. This is a unique uh, formation for Westmar. Back to pass, McClinic looking for Bell out there on the sideline. Lost it, intercepted at the 35, 25, 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown. That ought to do it. Oh, baby, there was a big interception by Craig Verhagen, a freshman out of a little shoot, Wisconsin, and he went right down the shoot to, to the touchdown. That's right, played the ball all the way, got a hand on it, tipped it right in front of himself, and oh, I hate to see that. He just, he just, we hand it, hand it to him every time. Now, this was a direct one, and what is that, six or seven turnovers now, and it's, it's really got to be a backbreaker for Westmont. You just can't win ball games, especially playoff ball games, turning the ball over that many times. And that turns out to be a 25-yard interception return for uh, Verhagen. That's his first interception of the day. Third one Kelly has thrown, and McClinic has uh, thrown a season-high interception total in this ball game. That one was uh, close to being complete. Just a nice catch by Verhagen. He went up high, tipped it, caught it, and then it was clear sailing down the sidelines. Back to pass for two. Baumgartner looking, firing, tipped, and incomplete. So it makes it 43-24, 11.32 to go. We'll be back. Now we had a chance finally to look into the Westmore record book. Yes, uh, Skolton's 249 yards of pass catching yardage as the kickoff sails out of bounds off to the right side. That is a new Westmar record, broke Angelo James' 79 record of uh, 183 passing yards. That has been the case all afternoon. you got to be proud of him for no other reason than that alone. His team was down and out early at 31-10. to 10. The knockout punch seemingly had been thrown in the early second quarter, but yet they came back and made a game out of it. Skolton going to take it to the 20, back to the 30. Looks upfield and won't get quite to the 35-yard line. Down at about the 32. Flags fly. A few uh, exchanges there. And kind of expected that. It was something near <laughs> of that magnitude on the last kickoff. And now they really uh, have it uh, out big time right in uh, the middle of the pile up there on Todd Skull. Up this year, 29 by Dana had been the previous high. And now 43 by the pointers. Back to pass. A little uh, slant in to Shipley and... Boy, Shipley might have a few uh, harsh words for his QB there. He hung him out to dry, just kind of laid it down at his shoot tops, and he tried his darndest to reach back and catch it, and he took a real uh, pounding as a result. Same little quick look-in pattern, and it was behind him again. As I said before, they're really tough to hit, and sometimes you got a lineman you got to throw around because it's, it's really just over the line of scrimmage, and they just can't seem to connect on that one. Here comes Heath Fitzsimmons into the ball game. Until midweek, he'd been slated maybe as the starter ahead of Kelvin Pierce, but this is his first action. He hasn't been in much. Vernon Bolden going to come out of there. Heath and uh, 
Looks like uh, Charles Hill maybe in the backfield for Westmore College. There's the give up the middle. And Hill going to carry it about the 19 and taken back at that point. Heading to Westmar, not running for the kind of yardage that we're normally accustomed to. They usually have up there in the 200, 250 category against tough opponents by this time. Started the second half with a minus 42 in rushing today, and they have not had that much success running the ball here in this half either. No, and of course, the big quarterback sacks, we had quite a few of them in the first half, and that's why the, the big negative yardage, but yeah, they just have gone to the pass right away and had two of them playing catch-up football. Bolden and Hill are in the backfield. There's Kelly McClinic rolling. Now a heavy rush, going to send him scrambling. Breaks two tackles, tripped up, and down he goes at about the four-yard line. Kelly's defense, you know, he's just been running for his life uh, about all afternoon. Yeah, and they're, you know, what are you going to do? Third and 25, you got to pass it. They know that, and they're coming hard, and, and it's just kind of like a cakewalk. They knew they weren't in this situation five minutes ago, but, boy, it can sure change with a couple of turnovers. We've been so proud of our offensive line all year, and, boy, what a job they've done. This has got to be one of the best offensive lines Westmar's had in years, if not uh, ranking in there as one of the best ever. But uh, I knew that was going to be a key today. How could we handle the big people up front? And there's been times today it's been a little mismatch. That's right. There's no question they got us pretty pretty strong pound for pound officially on their offense, our defense, and it's been a mismatch. Morick tries to get out of the end zone. Gets a low end over end punt away. Again, Rob White was hurt just before halftime, and he hasn't been back. We kind of think it was a knee. Kind of came down on his leg funny, and uh, that knocked him out of the ball game. Theo Blanco has been put on the sidelines for the pointers. How severely hurt he is. They'll be missing him next week if he can't come back, but I think he probably will be able to come back. <laughs> Pointers put it back in play and pitch out to Barry Rose to the short side and Rose going to go inside the 20 to about the 19, well they're going to mark it better than that, about the 16, 17 yard line as uh, that's play Westmore's used very successfully this year, Keith. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm sure they've seen that one on the film enough and got him five yards. They run the football a lot more the second half than they did in the first half and they're more concerned about wrecking some time off that clock now, especially with a 19 point lead. They're really and not too concerned about more points. They probably have enough if they can just keep that clock running. Down to the 944 mark. Baumgartner back. He is looking for more. Over the middle. Atron Kenny wide open. Joey Holmberg slipped a little bit on the cut. And he got inside of Joey. And Kenny doesn't need much area to catch the ball. And he had about four steps. Well, oh, perfect timing on the pattern. Made his break, looked, and the ball was there. Great catch. It wasn't really great. It wasn't hard to do, but he did bring it in and got him another touchdown. That one was well thrown by Baumgartner. He laid that one right in there. That's right. He's got the win behind him yet now, and then things are really going good, and Westmar's dobbers are down, and, and it just makes it that much easier. 49-24, and the point after try by Parrish. The football team from Wisconsin-Stevens Point apparently going to win their first playoff game in their school's history. Their team has got a legitimate shot at the national title, I think, with their offense. The placement, the kick by Parrish is in there. It's good. And that'll make it 50 to 24. They've hit the 50-point mark now for the fourth time this season. Back in a moment. And there's Dietz going to kick it off for the pointers. Going to be end over end. Taking it about the 6 by Vern Bolden to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Well, we found a little bit of a seam and almost got free to the sidelines. He was just ready to start looking for that alley to the outside, and he was taken down at about the 33-yard line where the Eagles will bring on the offense again, and this is uh, really where turnovers can mount up now because we don't have any choice but to throw the football. Might as well not just play the string out. we got to have some points and as many as we can score in the shorter period of time that's left. That's right. four game early in the fourth quarter after a blocked third-quarter punt. Gave Westmar a touchdown to draw it within a score. But three quick ones now in a short period of time of the pointers have put it out of reach. And Westmar's in a big catch-up roll now. McClinic going to carry out over the 35, about the 37-yard line. Tune in to KLEM in Lamar's, Iowa. Good to have you aboard on this uh, Saturday afternoon. Apparently the season finale for Westmar is the Eagles are a little short on time and uh, a lot of points behind now with nine whole six left to go in this football game. But what a courageous effort here these kids have put forth and uh, proudest punch of them. I know they're not going to quit on it uh, at this stage. That was a two-play, 21-yard drive of the pointers on that last score. There's Charles Hill going out over the 40 to the 45, 46-yard line. And Hill going to be driven out of bounds. Two of those passes 
Blanco caught one and ran for one before leaving the ball game at halftime. There's uh, the give to Vern Bolden. He'll carry it about the 49-yard line. Looks like Westmar is going to come right at him with a running game now and at least show them what, they, what they've done well all season. Well, that's right, and maybe there's a little pride here, so to speak, too, and, and try and grind it out and, and have some control here. And Of course, we know that some of these bats can break it for the big ones, and they've done it before, and that's maybe what they're hoping for a little bit here, too. Well, they're definitely sitting back looking for the passing game, so we might as well run it. There's got to be some openings inside. they got to be playing it soft up front, and I'm sure that's the thinking behind going to the running game at this point, trailing 50 to 24, down by 26 points. Well, we've seen how explosive this pointer offense is. They have racked off some quick touchdowns here in the first six minutes of this last quarter. Over the middle, he goes toward uh, Todd Skolton, and again, McClinic uh, overthrows him. That was 7.59 left to go in this ball game. Westmore down by 26 points at 50 to 24. Clinic back from center, thrown over the middle. There is Colton, makes another catch to the 40, 35, cuts back inside of the 30 and down at about the 27-yard line where the purple jerseys run him down. Scolton kind of ran in underneath and kind of scraped his defender off. Well, Game of his career here in what may be his last as a collegian. Over the middle, tipped in, almost intercepted. Tried to go to Scolton on a slant in, and uh, Kelly was hoping and praying there as he tried to thread the needle, and uh, there wasn't much of an opening there. About 9,100 students. Westmar at 450, full-time students. Quite a mismatch here today. There was a pass intended for Skolton for the corner of the end zone, and Westmar does an all-out passing game like they've had to go here today. Can't already fall him for throwing it into the enemy's hands a few times. Lofts this one up here for grabs. This is going to be incomplete. Could have been intercepted again by Dan Toyn, and uh, Blaine Bell came back and helped break that one up. They made like defensive backs, and Kelly was just hoping and praying that one too, uh, putting it up for grabs and hoping the right guy got under it. Uh, so many down the field patterns, they need to spell Blaine Bell or Todd Skolton from time to time. Oh, there's a blitz. Kelly McClinic picked it up and rolled out of there. Now he's in trouble. Now he's up the middle. Got a flag down. It'll be holding on Westmar. Lofts it toward the end zone. It's going to be intercepted. And uh, this is going to be returned out of the end zone by Gockard. And he'll be out to almost the 24-yard line. Flags go down all over the place. And, well, that was kind of a strange play. It's almost like uh, the, the play had ended. Uh, the... Uh, Pointers kind of showing disgust like maybe some of that's against them on yeah. the play, I would think, because it all came prior to the interception. They'd have to give them the down over again if they took it. First and 10 for the Pointers. And we got 6.59 left to play in the ball game. Baumgartner back from center. They're not going to go away from their game. Any. There's a pass. Oh, good hit over there by Joey Holmberg. And Joey kind of slow getting up there. Joey's got a bad shoulder. I think that hurt Joey a little bit. As he came up and hit Barry Rose from the blind side, he could see that one coming, and he came right up and stung him. And Joey's that kind of kid that wouldn't dare let him <laughs> let him know it hurt him. But you could tell it stung him a little bit. That was a jarring one where Rose is a solid kid. And uh, Joey kind of come up and put the hit on him blind side, and it was a uh, solid shoulder right into the thighs. And Rose's pro progress came to an abrupt stop. Picked up about three on the play. It's second down and seven. Baumgartner back again. Slips up in the pocket. Now he's scrambling to the 30. Going to go out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Last meeting these two will ever have, unless they would meet somewhere down the road again in a playoff situation. But, of course, pointers are at a position they can vary from NCAA Division Three is all here. At least they've settled things down a little bit. And the pointers prance up to the line of scrimmage, beginning to look every bit like the winner here of their first ever W in a playoff game. They've played three now, and they haven't won any of them till now. Here they get to uh, this uh, Porkowski kid, or Pozorski, I should say, and Pozorski is going to carry out over the 50 to the Westmar 45-yard line. That's going to be gain of about nine, and it's going to be a second down, short yardage situation. 5.52 left to go in the ball game. Well, I guess we've seen this out of our Westmar football team this year. They're a scrappy bunch, and as Randy said, it's not always uh, the way I particularly personally want to play. I want them to be aggressive, but uh, I'm not pleased, and I know fans of town aren't necessarily pleased with everything they see out of this football team, but uh, he has made it clear Westmar is no longer going to be an intimidated football program wherever they go on the road. Pass over the middle to Tweet, who makes a diving catch at the 31. That's really frustrating for the defense. Baumgartner still putting the ball airborne. 
Got receivers split to both sides. Kurt Westhoff showing blitz, and he was off sides. There's uh, Pozorski again going to the sidelines, and out of bounds he goes. Uh, what the outcome turns out to be today, we've enjoyed it immensely. It's been quite an experience, quite a chance for our football program and the school itself in northwest Iowa to get some recognition. I know a lot of folks in Wisconsin now know a lot more about uh, the community of Lamar's Iowa because they've asked a lot of questions about us, about Westmar, and we've educated them. Oh, we've got the kicker, Joe Parrish, in here now running quarterback as they've retired. Kirk Baumgartner for the day. He's going to roll to the right and keep it and take a pretty good hit at about the 25-yard line. Uh, Kurt Westhoff doesn't care who's uh, running with the football. and He ain't going to be merciful to anybody. That's right. He says, here, let me introduce myself to you, quarterback. And sure did. That's the first option play for them. They definitely can't do it with Baumgartner. And that's nice to see him keep it on the ground here, though, at least. That's a, at least a little... A little tacked here in this game. They do drop off a little bit uh, in size here. Six foot one ninety five for uh, Joe Parrish. He didn't look that big, really. He didn't look like he's that heavy. But uh, Baumgartner, of course, goes six four about one ninety one. And uh, Parrish actually uh, is a freshman on this football team, so he might be the quarterback of the future when Baumgartner's days are over. There's a give up the middle to Pozorski, and Pozorski going to carry it about the twenty one yard line. And we see uh, Chad Shook get up off the bottom. We see Wayne Udick up off the bottom. And J.R. Richard, or J.R. Richard Johnson, I should say, up off the bottom for Westmark College. 3.52 left to go. Story I did want to share with everybody, and before the day runs out, we will. Uh, Patrick Walton, who's been playing some defensive tackle with this football team, got his first taste of pheasant hunting in uh, northwest Iowa the other day. And Marcus Hancher did also. Defensive coach uh, Mark Lohr took him out and showed him the Showed them what one was, and they got one, right? That's pheasant hunting in western Plymouth County. They did get one, and uh, Patrick is so proud he carried it around in his pickup for two days showing everybody. <laughs> so there's a broken play as they snap the football. Kind of a funny story. Delay a game going to be the call against the pointers there as they throw flags. Uh, the funny part of the story was, I guess, Walton had never even heard of a pheasant before. Couldn't pronounce what it was. Still can't, but he was so proud he had shot one down in Plymouth County and he'll have something to go back to Wyandatch, New York and tell the city boys about in Long Island his uh, experience of shooting pheasants in Iowa. I gotta give him credit for knocking the thing down. I, I sure can't hit him and I've done it before so gotta be a lot of fun for him. Yeah, there's probably a lot of hunters out there saying, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I've been hunting all my life and had a lot of uh, negative days out there right. on the shooting grounds. Marcus Ancher said he'd never seen one but he'd uh, seen one in a book. He said, back to pass. Parrish airing it out for the end zone. Seeloff is going to be there to break it up. Going downfield for Jim Prince. The ball game has transpired, I guess. The pointer is just kind of showing their own message that <laughs> we don't approve of the way things have uh, gone today necessarily out of the way you guys have treated us sometimes, so take this. They wouldn't be opposed to putting some more points on, I wouldn't think. 50-24, and as I mentioned, it may be the last ever meeting between the two schools. There won't ever be a retaliatory attempt. There's a pass catch over the middle for the first down. This is a backup wide receiver. And boy, this guy's a target, I'll tell you. Todd Bonlander. He's a six foot seven, 230-pound freshman out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I think I can find him in the secondary. <laughs> He's a big one, that's for sure, and a big target. And then well, Parrish took a couple shots, but he managed to get a pass downfield and complete it. Down to the 12 and a half yard line. It's going to be a first and ten there. Down to the three-minute mark in this ball game. And a long one with all the passing. Hope you enjoyed it, though, and got to be proud of our Westmore football team who will be heading back after a meal here on campus, heading back to Lamar's, Iowa. There's the pitch out to Barry Rose, and he'll go inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Defense has just flat out been on the field way too much today, Brownie, and they're a fatigued football team. They're going to rest well tonight. Well, they're emotionally, they're, they're emotionally drained and physically drained right now, and and it's it's too bad they're going to probably get scored on here again. Looks like because uh, they're just they're just down and out and and mentally out of the game right now. They're they're beaten, but it's it's too bad the way it had to happen. But they've done a great job. It's been a great year. Uh, if you stepped out for maybe a little snack in the kitchen, <laughs> you missed a flurry of touchdowns that decided this one. They all came in a matter of about two minutes, period of time, early in this fourth quarter that made a 31-24 lead, 50-24. Whoa! Did he get crunched from behind? That was Buck Rogers coming in for the weak side from behind and uh, just uh, did some head hunting there and uh, leveled him. And Mark McLeod was there to get him on the other side. And Buck hadn't really had a good hit on anybody all day. McLeod's got a couple of sacks, but uh, Buck really got his shot in there. That's right. That's poor Parrish kids really getting unloaded on. And 
I think he's probably ready to say, hey, bring the first stringer back out of here. This is rough, but he's learning. 16 seniors are down to the last minute and a half of their college career, and we're going to miss them, Doug. They played some great football here for Westmar. Fortunately, in the case of like a Kelly McClinic or a Charles Hill, we haven't had them for four years, but we loved having you on campus, guys, and uh, thanks for some memories, some great memories in this 87 season. Sure, it's fun. Boy, it's, it's great entertainment to come watch these guys play every Saturday, and it's been fun here. It's been fun the wrong way, I guess, but they, we've seen a, uh, quite a show here today, too. Pazarski up the middle for a couple of more. It's fourth down at about two from the four-yard line. Comes Tweet into the ballgame. Steve Tweet, a senior out of Stanley, Wisconsin. Most of these Wisconsin Stevens Point players come from the state of Wisconsin. Uh, they've got one we've talked about today from Chicago, and those two uh, SMU transfers from Dallas, Texas, Keith Majors and Atron Kenny, that have certainly helped the program a little bit. But basically, they're Wisconsin kids from right here in the close proximity of Stevens Point. Back to pass, Parrish airing it out for Tweed. Tipped away and incomplete. Covering up was uh, Jeff Schwartz out there that broke it up. And Schwartz is going to allow Westmar's offense to come on and run at least a couple more plays. 42 seconds left to go in the ballgame. 50-24. The pointers getting a big day out of uh, quarterback Kirk Baumgartner. Baumgartner running for a touchdown, throwing for four others, and throwing a two-point conversion pass. And the three blitz Creek touchdowns within a two-minute span of this fourth quarter allowed the pointers to just put this thing out of reach and not enough catch-up time for Westmar to get the job done here this afternoon. I think they, again, have got to respect our program a little, Keith. We gave them, a, we gave them quite a ball game today for most of uh, three and partially a fourth quarter. Well, no question about it. I think it's... You know, it's frustrating to, to look at the scoreboard and, and realize what's going on here, but uh, you got to come out. You can't make those mistakes. There's the give. Second man through. Charles Hill. He'll go out to about the six and driven backwards, and I think that's exactly the tone Randy Smeza will take after the ball game. They've got to know they didn't play a very good first half, yet they were still in the ball game. They, I guess, have matured to that level that not playing their best against a, an exceptional football team. They had found ways, just invented ways virtually to keep in the hunt, and uh, they're down to the last 17 seconds. Westmar probably will run the last play here with this ball game. And I think uh, you know, with no imagination at all, this could have been a much closer ball game and maybe even a Westmar victory if some other things had gone better for him. There's the quick dive up the middle. This is uh, Heath Fitzsimmons, I think, getting a chance to carry the football. Down to the three zeros on the clock. She's over the final 50-24. Wisconsin Stevens Point wins their first ever playoff game. Westmar will end the season at eight and three, but oh, Brownie, what an experience playing in the National NEI playoffs. Well, sure was exciting. I guess it's, it's been a big buildup all week, an anticipation, uh, tremendous frustration how things happen. We'd sure like to see a cleaner game on Westmar's behalf as as far as turnovers, penalties, you hurt them so many times, and and uh, they learned a lesson. That's this is it's one thing to get here, it's another thing to win here, and you got to get here to try it, and that's what they did. Boy, hats off to them for that, but uh, a, a good game. they got to feel good about it. They, they hit hard and played well, and, and all this David Goliath stuff, they, they found out this little David wasn't too, tough, or wasn't too bad after all. And again, they were not intimidated, as David and Goliath, uh, the story goes. And, and of course, uh, they did end up having to really go to the air to uh, try and win this ballgame today, more than I think they even intended they, to uh, maybe have a shot at uh, this uh, pointer ball club. They went to the air a little more than they'd even anticipated. The pointer team, uh, I think, could have some hurts from this one because Westmar dealt some licks out, and they intended to come in here and do some hitting. They felt they were going to show the pointers uh, that they hadn't played anybody. They hits like a uh, little Westmar College, and I think they got that point across, if nothing else, today. And the pointers got to have some little respect for them. Well, the story of the ball game, though, was turnovers, uh, three interceptions by the pointers, and uh, three fumbles by Westmar. And the pointers were pretty good about converting all of those to uh, touchdowns. All but about one or two of those six turnovers were converted to touchdowns today. And one, of course, directly on the interception that really was the backbreaker early in this fourth quarter. It made two touchdowns in an 18-second span to take a 31-24 lead and increase it to uh, 43 to uh, 24 at that point. Pointers, of course, tacked on one more. Just uh, another minute later, and uh, within a span of two minutes, this one was over, Browning at 50 to 24. Well, we'll be back to put the finishing touches on the old season here after we take this final 60-second timeout. Yeah. 
Ben, I think we've hit all of our commercial stops for the day. And uh, Randy Schmazel being uh, presented with uh, a little remembrance of his appearance with the Westmore Eagles here in this 1987 playoff, uh, having a little presentation down on the field. And, of course, they'll uh, go back home now with uh, a lot of memories and I think uh, can hold their heads high because this has been a season of pride and uh, the community has been very proud of the way this team has uh, played football this year and given us a lot of exciting remembrances of uh, a Westmore season that will end at 8-3 and three here today with their first ever postseason appearance. But I think uh, with the kids we've got on campus, there's no reason to think this stuff's going to end. I think we'll maybe have this fun again in years to come. That's right. That's one thing you got to hope for, that these underclassmen here are saying, hey, I want to get back at this, and, and next year let's go come on and win it. And it's a new challenge for them, and I hope they can pick up on it. Well, they've just presented Todd Skolton with something, and I'm sorry we didn't have our crowd mic turned up loud enough to catch what that was. Todd had a record-setting day here today. We don't have his final stats yet. He caught, I think, a couple more balls after we gave you the 249-yard pass total. He was going to be very doggone close to uh, 300 yards of uh, pass-catching yardage today. It's a Westmore record for sure. It's a new NAI playoff record. We congratulate Todd on a big day. His catches on Kelly McClinic's passes uh, kept Westmore in this one most of the afternoon. He made some big plays today. No question about it. And we went back to him several times, I guess, and he came up with them. And he's been a big player they were a big play ball player all year, and he did it again today, and it's fun to see him out there. Well, he's one of the seniors that won't be back next year, so we saw his career end on a very positive note, a big high note here today. Final tally, though, 50-24. The scoreboard reads it and tells, it the, sto tells the story that I guess is going to send the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point on to the second round of the playoffs, and we uh, congratulate D.J. Leroy and his ball club. He's got a fine offensive football team and uh, not even all that shabby a defensive squad, Brownie, and we wish them good luck in the uh, playoff rounds to come. Be interesting to see how some of the other teams fared, particularly uh, Midland and Dana, who were on our schedule, beat one of those people and, uh, of course, lost to another one of them uh, in a ball game that came down to the fourth quarter to decide it in the Dana Vikings. And, again, congratulations to Randy Schmazel and his staff and this Westmar football team. Well, that's our story from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. We appreciate you joining us. Safe driving to those fans that are headed home now, and uh, we all should be back in town somewhere around uh, midnight, 1 o'clock, and I think if you get the chance to uh, pat these football players on the back, it's, it's a good season for them, Brownie. You bet. Great season. Now, thanks to our sports-minded firms. It made it possible to be here in Stevens Point today until we uh, get back on the sports trail again, which will be basketball now, I guess, full-time. So long, everybody.